always, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where we're learning all things AI with a subject matter expert. Sean Anderson of DMCG Global has helped me understand AI and prompting. Sean, great to have you back. Thanks for having me, Adam. It's good to be uh, back in the mix and yeah, talking about all things AI this time around. Last time we were working together, we we're talking about something different, but uh, the audience knows about my story about Clucky. Now, uh, <laughs> I'll get straight into it. Our friend Evan Floyd has given me a super chat to tell you about the story about Clucky, the immortal chicken, but you know about Clucky because in the last time you were on the stream, I told you about Clucky. And most importantly, I've just written a book about a chicken that <clears throat> won't give up on the estate. We love this chicken. She's been around for nearly eight or nine years. And I reached out to you as an expert of prompting AI or asking AI questions on how mm -hmm. I could illustrate the book using AI. You sent me some very impressive um, images uh, and then we found out some limitations. But then I thought, well, hang on a second, before you and I just speak privately, let's talk in the global community about what's happening with AI. We're going to go through what AI is used for, some of its limitations, what are some of the ethical concerns where the average person can access AI? What does prompting mm -hmm. mean? How do we prompt properly? And then, of course, questions from the audience as we go through this. But let's bring it yep. right back to square one. What is AI? Yeah, so so AI, to, to, to put it simply, it's, it's uh, essentially technology that's uh, being built to, to mimic uh, what humans can do, essentially. So it's, uh, are you there, Adam? Yep, still here. Just zooming in on you, my friend. Sorry, I lost you. No, you still got me. I'm just here. Okay, so yeah. So to, to put it simply, AI, um, it's it's been put in place to, to essentially mimic what humans can do, right? So to, uh, you know, to automate x y and z activities or at the very least uh provide utmost convenience to to you know your everyday um tasks essentially so what, what what's it used for so as i understand it we'll, we'll keep it simple to start with i'm we're very familiar mm -hmm. with chat gpt but then as mm -hmm. you showed me when we we're talking about illustrating the book we you actually came up with some gorgeous images and then i started playing around with some of the links that you sent me and i found mm -hmm some incredible ways just to feed information into uh, the prompter, if you will, and then ask it to produce something. But yep. going back to the basics before we get deeper into this, mm -hmm. what's AI used for? Who's using it and why are they using it? Yeah, so uh, AI is used to, uh, you know, automate. Uh, I've lost you again, Adam, but I'm just going to keep talking. I can't see your face. Uh, no, you haven't. Uh, but... I'm, I'm just zooming in on you, my friend. It's all right. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so. Yeah, so it's it's used, you know, to to basically automate uh, tasks for people. You know, so let's say in the recruitment industry, for instance, you can use AI to uh, automate things like uh, emails, job descriptions, job posts, uh, out outbound messages. So basically, it's a tool. It's it's a piece of technology that's that's been built to, like I said, or automate things and provide utmost convenience to to people's day to day. Um, so there is i'm not sure if people are familiar with but uh there was uh what he uh sort of coined was the term the the, the turing test which is essentially uh the point in which artificial intelligence becomes indistinguishable from human, right? So ChatGPT, for instance, has passed that test, right? Because if you prompt it correctly, it it will, it, it has passed the Turing test, meaning that it can produce text that is now indistinguishable from human. And you've got other tools like Midjourney and Leonardo that create imagery through AI. They have also passed the Turing test, meaning that it's now indistinguishable from AI. So there's there's probably one big component that hasn't yet passed the Turing test and that is uh, music, right? So there are a couple of companies that are uh, building tools, building software that's looking to uh, essentially pass that test. So there's, there's a company uh, that I'm actually working with called Splash out of Brisbane. So Gen AI music company. Uh, there's, there's other big, you know, uh, companies in the space such as Stability 
that are using AI to create uh, music across a wide wide range of different genres. You know, so it could be classical music, house music, uh, you know, R and B, hip hop, all those sort of genres. So that's that's where we are with with AI. But that's sort of more of a cultural response. But um, in terms of why it was brought about, in, you know, in my opinion, opinion and a lot of experts' opinion, it was it was. Uh, you know, release to the public these these sort of tools like ChatGPT to to make our day to day easier, right? To automate the mundane that allows us to focus on higher value activities. So we can uh, those who have played with ChatGPT. What does ChatGPT stand for anyway? What's the GPT stand for? Do you know? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Yeah. Uh, GPT. It's generative. Oh, sorry prediction i believe from text. from memory yeah yeah general yeah. prediction text perhaps yeah so with the chat gpt that's kind of the open sourced one as i understand it some people have said uh, you know let's get straight into a conspiracy theory that mm -hmm. sure artificial intelligence is automating a lot of processes in the workplace and making life simpler for many people out there it's also arguably taking away some jobs that's an argument but when we use an open source platform such as chat gpt is there a possibility that, that there's some malice intent to that, that it's gathering our data? Because I've noticed that when I use it, it's keeping, first of all, I have to log on. But second of all, mm. it's keeping a record of all the conversations I have with a computer. Yeah, so that's where it becomes problematic, I think, when, you know, you, you just need to be mindful of, of this sort of thing, right? Be, be mindful of the data that you're sharing with, with ChatGPT because ultimately it's open AI that's, that's you know the company behind ChatGPT, and then Microsoft are ultimately one of the major shareholders. You know, so you need to be mm. very mindful of the data that you dump into uh, these these sort of models, uh, and that's that's probably the biggest problem at the moment. That's front and center for a lot of businesses because you know they can't stop they can't necessarily stop their employees from using ChatGPT. You know, you can obviously set up internal firewalls and and prevent them from using it perhaps on their on their um, work laptops or computers but you know they can there's always a means to access it right whether it's through vpn or mobile or some other device right and there's other ways that you can go about installing chat gpt capabilities as well like you can do something as complicated as you know you can you can you can download the repository through GitHub and then you can push it through the terminal, something like that, and then you have full access to its capabilities. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's, the, that's the biggest problem at the moment in terms of regulation from an ethical standpoint. You know, I'm working with a business at the moment uh, who has leveraged a way to, to get around that so that th there are ways around it, basically. So there's software out there that you know, can centralize all of that data that you share as an employee. So it's hosted entirely uh, within your company's network, right? It becomes a problem when you use it, when you use ChatGPT on your personal account and you start dumping sensitive company information in there. That's when it becomes a problem. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I hadn't considered that. I, I think I was um thinking about what if I at university as example. So we used to have, I remember the teachers saying that we have a software program that when you write an essay, they run the, I guess it was primitive AI at that time to see if you mm. had plagiarized something from an existing book and yeah. it was plagiarizing software. But now of course, mm. you, you can ask ChatGPT or these um, AI software programs, you can say, write me a an essay on, I don't know, the second world war um, from this period yeah. to that period and make it 3,000 words and it will just produce it for you. So what mm -hmm. does this mean for education when people are at university, as an example, and they have to write an essay? What stops them using AI to create an essay? Well, that's the thing. I don't think anything can stop them from using it now. You know, there's, there's I know schools are trying to ban it, but the reality is kids kids are smart nowadays. You know, they're tech savvy. Yeah. They'll always find a way around it. They'll, they'll find a way to use it one way or another. So the way that I look at that is you need to just embrace it, you know, like, because it's, it's the same way, whether it's a student or you're a company, if you don't embrace, like the cat's out of the bag, you know what I mean? The cat's out of the bag, yeah. AI is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So either you embrace it or you get left behind, right? If you don't want to embrace it, that's, that's fine, but you need to, 
you need to understand that you will you will fall behind your peers, whether that's in business or whether that's even on a personal level um, or, or or in school. So because, as you mentioned, sorry, what was that test again where they couldn't um, distinguish between a human writing it and a computer writing it? Uh, the Turing test. Al Turing yeah, Alan test. Turing, the Turing test, yeah. So if we now have, um, if AI has passed a Turing test, um, mm. just on this university example, because it's going to be big, and I say university is a scam anyway, but now you can scam university itself just yeah, to pass. Yeah. Um, Indoctrination camp. <laughs> that's right it's not education it's indoctrination it's just like regurgitate yeah. what my professor wants me to say here um yeah can because that writing comes out passing the turing test can you get ai to check if it was ai can can teachers use an ai program to say is this an artificial yeah. this is an interesting one so and this comes down to the prompting right if you if you don't know how to correctly structure your prompts then yeah sure there's these ai detection tools that can detect that it's AI written. But if you know how to structure your prompts correctly, there is a 0% chance that any AI detection tool can distinguish that it's generated from AI in opposed to human. There's just wow. no way. Because I can structure my prompt so, so specifically and so elaborate that there's eight specific steps to my prompt. And in one of those eight steps, I am defining the style and tone of the output, right? And I can define that as anything. It could be, it could be something as simple as defining the style and tone of the output to sound like Russell Brand. Right. And it will sound like Russell Brand, right? It'll scour the web for many different podcasts and interviews and articles. It will understand his tonality, and then it will incorporate that into the output. And then you won't be able to determine whether it's human generated or AI generated. What is, allow me to ask the silly questions here. What is prompting? I'm guessing prompting means asking a question, but what what is prompting in AI speak? Yeah, so prompting is the art of talking to AI, right? So it's, it's, it's prompt engineering. And I've spoken to you know, a lot of experts in the space, and it seems that the consensus is that prompt engineering and prompting AI, the ability to talk to AI competently, is going to be one of the most sought after skill sets over the coming years across any discipline. It's going to be a prerequisite almost for any person in any job across any vertical. You need to know how to talk to AI. And that's that's what prompting is. It's it's the ability to be able to not just prompt AI, but like I said, to be able to to talk to it so competently that you will always get the output that you desire upon your prompting. Yeah. It, it made me think of when AI was coming in, I was um, doing some thought experiments and I actually said on one of my videos, I, I remember saying it, it, the, the real skill won't be reading what AI tells you. It'll be making sure you ask the right question of AI. Exactly. And yeah. then your company, DMCG Global, they they pointed me out to you and, and they're like, oh, Sean knows how to do all this. And then when we started playing around with the chicken story, and it was a really good training tool out there, what I learned just doing it in the background was I, I wrote the story myself. And then I said to ChatGPT, yeah. I said, can you proofread this? And it did that. And then I said, thought as a bit of fun, I said, turn it into a fairy tale. And it did that. Mm -hmm. And then I said, mm -hmm. turn it into a children's story. And it did that. And then I said, I want you to turn it into a Shakespearean adult story. Mm -hmm. And it did that. And it did it within seconds. And my brain was melting because when I started playing yeah. with AI, it's like, you know, um, <laughs> what's going to happen to Bitcoin or what's the meaning of life? And, you know, who's going to win the presidential election? Just really basic stuff. But one part yeah. was I realized, first of all, you can go a lot deeper than that. But then the second part was then I realized that you could start having a conversation with AI. That is, yeah. it wasn't just one question, close it off, next question, close it off. It was actually back and forth on that. So yeah. I, I want to link this into some of the ethical concerns that you were touching on before. So some of the ethical concerns that you can see in business, I remember this story of a yeah, uh, sort of before AI, but it was a good example of where AI is going. This guy was working for this company, I believe it was in the United States, 
and he had all this work to do, but he went, <laughs> being an entrepreneur, he went to India, like over the internet, and he outsourced all of his coding work to India. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it came back at a higher quality than he could do and in half the time. And yep. he did this for a long time. And, you know, he kept, you know, kicking goals for the company and putting the company light years ahead of other competitors. And then they caught on to what he was doing. And, of course, they sacked him. But then there yep. was an ethical debate. It's like, well, hang on, you've asked me to do this. I've done it. And I've done it to a higher standard. And I've done it in less time than you required. But, of course, the problem with that is the leakage of, uh, as you mentioned, intellectual property coming from that company. Yeah. Going back to our audience now, what are some of the safety concerns beyond personal data that you're concerned about when it comes to individuals using artificial intelligence? Yeah, great question. I think, I think, I mean, going back to if I can just tie it in with school, right? Like I said, there's, there's, even if you ban students from using it, there's, that they're still going to find a way to use it, right? Now, the problem that I see with AI is that the doctors of the future, the lawyers of the future, they could have quite literally acquired their degree, their PhD, off the back of what ChatGPT has generated for them, right? Wow. So that's where it starts becoming problematic, I think, you know? At, that's where it starts becoming really concerning when, when you realize that, hey, you know, this doctor sitting in front of me today who I've come in to see who's supposed to be the expert. Um, I mean, they could be, you know, they, they could be the expert, but in, in 10, 20 years time, they could have also, yeah, they, they could have submitted all of their assignments, you know, their PhD thesis, everything could have been generated and completed by AI, which means that obviously they're not, they don't really have the true knowledge of the doctors of today or, of yesterday you know so that's mm. that's a concern i think another concern is uh, uh when those who are already introverted individuals uh they start relying heavily on uh, ai as their friend do you know what i mean an only friend and you yep. can even tie this into the metaverse right so when, when when you start tying ai into things like the metaverse and then you've got uh ai generated avatars right who are powered by ai generated text and imagery then it becomes almost dystopian like right because then it's like i mean and this is happening at the moment right there's 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 companies out there that are they're providing ai girlfriends you know so that's in is that the ones in japan or is it beyond japan Beyond Japan. Wow. Yeah, so if you, there's, I'm not sure who who in the audience, perhaps if you could, you know, drop a comment, um, has seen the movie Her with... Oh, uh, I was about Joaquin to raise Phoenix. it. I've been, yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in so fact, this... I've, I, I made my audience, if you will, um, watch that movie. Watch it. <laughs> it's a yeah, great movie. Because, he, but... yeah, it is. He fell in love with AI. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing. I think Blade Runner. Uh, the, the, the recent yeah, Blade Runner with, that with Ryan well. Gosling. You can look at that yeah. one as well. That's also an AI girlfriend. Like, that's where we're going. And, and you know, it's, it's hard for people to wrap their head around this. You know, it's, even if I talk to my parents about this sort of thing, it's, it's, it's hard for them to wrap their head around, or even, you know, my generation or younger generations. But this, this is coming. This is coming. Um, it's not too far away. And, yeah, that... that they would be my sort of the, the, the primary concerns, I suppose, that spring to mind for me when it comes to uh, yeah ethical sort of issues with AI. Yeah, I, I do have some questions from the audience, and that audience, I, I will get to your questions, but um, I want to lay the foundation here. The, the movie Her that you mentioned, um, yeah, some people hated it, but I really enjoyed. It. In fact, I really enjoyed the um, soundtrack to it when I was doing my MBA. Mm -hmm. I was always used to listen to the soundtrack of Her, and then and then I later saw the movie. And there's a, there's a part of that movie that melts my brain that I keep thinking about when it comes to artificial intelligence, right at the end where uh, Phoenix falls in love with, uh, uh, who was the voice again? She was a famous actor uh, who was the voice for it, um, Scarlett Johansson. And okay. yeah, it, it was just such a great movie, low budget, but it, it didn't matter. It was a story that was important. And right at the end of the movie, there's a component where he's saying, she basically admits that she's now seeing other people. But mm. then she had she had equally from memory, she had also 
where she was also seeing other AI, as in she was in relationships with other human yep. beings. <laughs> but the AI was in relationships with AI. And then it went a step further. And and the prompt was correct. The, the question from River was, are you are you seeing them currently? And, and she goes, yes. And then he goes, are, are you talking mm. to them right now? And it's like, yes. And then I'm like, oh, my God, she's having multiple simultaneous relationships immediately and in real time with multiple people and AIs at the same time, whilst equally yep. maintaining a perfectly sound per se relationship with the main star at the time. And I'm just like, whoa, that, that, that's yeah. really pushed the boundaries to the next part of the um, movie. Um, yep. Any comments on that? Yeah, uh, that's, it's, it's really scary when you start going down that rabbit hole, you know, so that's, so when, when we get to that stage, what, what we're essentially talking about is um, essentially it's like super AI, you know, so it's, it's commonly referred to as uh, AGI, so artificial general intelligence. Um, right. But it, 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 it's probably best to first make uh, uh, the, it's 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 probably best to point out the difference between machine learning and deep learning i think firstly because when you think of ai it's it's essentially broken up into these two major components right so just just for the audience for those who aren't aware machine learning is 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 things like you know chatbots right or predictive text you know so when you when you type something into google incorrectly and it says did you mean this that's machine learning right or if there are, uh, you know, if you're checking out something, if you're adding something to cart on Amazon, right? And at the bottom, it said, it says, you know, it, it recommends something, right? That's all based on machine learning. Now, where deep learning comes into it is that's when AI starts learning on its own accord without human intervention, right? So machine learning is obviously there's human intervention, right? There's coding behind the scenes. And then when you get into deep learning and neural networks and all this sort of stuff, then that's when it starts iterating upon itself without any any human intervention. So you you may have seen yourself, Adam, and, and, and the audience may have seen the interaction between two robots uh, at a convention. I think it was it was Sophia or Sophie uh, and another and another robot, and they start talking to it. They 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 start answering questions from the audience essentially, right? They're taking questions from the audience and they're answering them in this dystopian like. Uh, sort of output and then sort of halfway through uh that q a session the robots start talking amongst each other and they start creating their own language on yeah, the spot right. Yeah. right so that that's where deep learning starts coming into it right because they're, they're starting to do their own thing they're starting to create their own language right and that's when you can start going down the path of uh, you know uh, hopefully not but that's when you start going down the path of of things like irobot I with will smith Yep. Right. <laughs> yeah. But like, ho hopefully, it doesn't end up that way, and and that's why regulation is is paramount. And you know, uh, there was an interview with Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. I think it was the first interview. And uh, Elon Musk makes the comparison of AI to seatbelts, saying that we can't take the same amount of time we took to regulate seatbelts to regulate AI, right? Because I think the time in which they took to regulate seatbelts. I think it was something like 20 years. It was something outrageous, even after after it was proven that it was saving lives uh, and 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 reduce, uh, reducing uh, uh, injury, right? So what he was saying is we can't take this same approach to AI. We can't take 20 years to regulate it to the point in which it becomes irreversible, right? Because that's when it starts becoming really problematic and too late you know it's too late to go back and that's when we enter an era of dystopia uh and there's and it's called something right there's there's a term for this there's a word for this it's called well two words technological singularity right so technological singularity is the point in which technology becomes irreversible and that's not just ai that's all things all emerging technologies coming together as one Right, so it could be AI in conjunction with IoT, Internet of Things in conjunction with blockchain mm. or other distributed ledger technologies, robotics. It's when all those things become one, and it's technological singularity to the point in which it's too late, <laughs> and and then we truly are in a, a Will Smith iRobot situation. So, uh, 
hopefully it doesn't get to that point oh i also love that movie um yeah. It's really powerful. And what were the three rules? Can you remember the three rules that they programmed the robots? Oh, it was like, first, it can't do any harm to humans. Yeah. Um, and then something else. And then the, first, the last one couldn't undo the, can't compromise the first two rules. Uh, viewers out there, if, if you can remember the three rules for iBot, um, it, it was such a good movie. And at the end of that movie, do you remember at the end of the movie where there's this like deep part where it's saying, if, if they're just robots, why is it if you remember there was an image where they're they're standing in a shipping container but they're all standing together instead of the robots you know because it's just a piece of machinery why isn't the machinery just standing randomly instead all these robots huddled together like human beings would huddle together in a survival situation and that to me that was the eeriest part of the movie right at the very end where they're all standing together i'm like wow that's powerful now what we're talking about actually um links perfectly to steve jay's question out there steve jay uh, superhuman uh, expert out in the field who just gives me the best questions and quotes in this community. He says, how far away is the marriage between artificial intelligence and robotics? Do you mean marriage as in hand in marriage or marriage as in symbiotic uh, relationship? Well, it's funny. When, <laughs> when I read that, I read the same thing because... Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I actually thought about it before. It's, I just... if, if, if it's the latter, we're already there. So, give me an example. Well, when I think of... So, I think of two buckets, right? I think of symbiotic relationship between AI and robotics, which I believe we're already there. You know, AI and re robotics can do pretty incredible things. They can perform labor jobs. They can, you know, I've seen videos recently of, of, of robots cooking in the kitchen. Like, literally, you'll have, a, you'll have a kitchen area and you'll have robot hands that will just come down and they'll start preparing a meal like those things exist so that's what i mean by symbiotic relationship but if you're talking about marriage as in robot and and human holding hands maybe in the metaverse i'm not sure how far we are we are in real life yeah yeah you can see so in the metaverse i i've got a lot of predictions on the metaverse and some people say it never work. And I'm like, we're, we're already kind of there. If you think about people who are gamers, that is a form of a metaverse. But when it becomes all immersive and you can just live yep. in there, uh, yep. it leads actually to the other movie. We're giving a lot of um, references to movies here. But if you think of the movie Surrogates, have you seen that with Bruce Willis? Um, I haven't seen that one, no. Oh, it's a really good movie. Uh, again, it's not so much artificial intelligence, but basically you stay in your bedroom or anywhere and then you have a surrogate body of yourself and the surrogate body is you know the best version of yourself if you're bald you've got hair if you're fat you're skinny mm. if you've got no boobs you've got boobs you've got all the, the things that you want in the perfect you and you stay mm. at home and you plug into your surrogate and your surrogate goes out into the world but of course the extension to that is that if you've got artificial intelligence you don't even know who the surrogate is. You don't know if you're linking with a person or if it's just artificial yeah. intelligence. So that's your homework to watch. It, it's reasonably old. I mean, it's when Bruce Willis was at his prime, another really good movie. But right. then, then we look at relationships. If you look at, you know, because this is when the ethics get into it, and we might touch on some, we'll go into some touchy areas here per se. As you mentioned, there are companies out there who are creating partners, girlfriends and boyfriends for people who are lonely out there. And mm. even though the individual knows that they're in a relationship with a, a code, they're so lonely or indifferent, they don't actually care. They know it's a code, they know it's a computer, but the person gives them, no. oh, sorry, I said the person, the code gives them so much um, meaning and purpose and attention and, and whatever they want that mm -hmm. th they're quite happy to fall into that space. And I actually think about it is like when, when you're watching you remember three dimensional movies, like you put your 3D glasses on, you know that yep. something's not coming out of the screen, but it feels like it's coming out of the screen because you can see it coming yep. out of the screen. Therefore, you're like, oh, well, I'll just roll with it. When I lived in Korea, I went to what was called the four dimensional cinema. And that was, hmm. it was like a 3D cinema, except the fourth dimension was, if you will, was when there was an explosion, your seat vibrated. When there was smoke on the screen, smoke came into the movie theater. When it was cold, uh, the air conditioning dropped when it was hot. It went up when uh, I was watching X Men, one of these field um, movies where a spaceship landed. I think it was in a field of flowers, and then the cinema mm. filled with smell. Essentially, what it was doing, it was touching on all of your senses 
uh, wind was another one. There was wind that went through the cinema and you know, you're yeah. not really in the scene, but you kind of let yourself go with it. When we now, you can see with the um, eye vision or whatever they're calling it. What, what is it? The eye. Oh, uh, vision pro. Yeah. Thank Apple, you. And they're, vision they're, pro. Yeah, Apple, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're all immersed into this space. Once you actually, in my opinion, once you actually start tapping into the, the, the senses of your body, you know, taste, touch, sound, smell, audible, yep. and we've already got sight and sound, that's already taken care yep. of. But when we start taking the other senses, I think we're just going to fall into this world. Yeah. Yeah. That's when it starts getting scary. I mean, that's, that's uh, to, to reference another movie, because that seems to be the yep. theme. Uh, Ready Player One. Uh, I... I've heard of this. I haven't seen it. Let me just, uh, I'll put it in here because right. I do want to see it. That has, so does that have Dexter one. in it? The guy from Dexter? Uh, I don't believe I've seen, is Dexter the TV series, is it? Yeah, he was the mass murderer. Yeah. I, don't know I haven't seen that, but Ready Player One is essentially what most people think when they think of the metaverse. Okay. Right? So it's it's being inside this world indefinitely. Right, where you can see, you can feel, you can touch, you can smell. Um, I don't know how far away far away we are from that, but I, I'd say it's a while, a while away, to be honest. Just just given the the sheer computing power required for something like that, if you, yeah, I mean, I mean, Fort Fortnite do something sort of similar, right? Where they they have everyone For, Fortnite's how they do it is actually really interesting right because they have what seemingly looks like a massive map but the way that the 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 game sort of the game nomics of it work is by the time that uh people get to the center of the map or before they even start spreading out most of them have already died anyway right so if you take that same concept and apply it to something like ready player one it just yeah, it requires. I mean, I heard Matthew Ball talk about it. He, he's he has a book about the metaverse, and he says that we need at least one thousand uh, one thousand x the computational power that we have today to facilitate that sort of world. But it's pretty it's pretty scary to think about, nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, and, and when you start, as you mentioned, blockchain, and you start networking yeah. computers, like. Decentralized cloud storage is the basic version of that. But when you start having decentralized compute, computational power, that's when yeah. it's like, oh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, just in a theory, and I'm not a coder, so what the hell do I know what I'm talking about? But if you took all the computers yeah. in the world, just your, your PCs, and you networked that computing power, and in return, you get a small token or some payment or some Bitcoin, it doesn't matter, some money, then suddenly you yeah. do have unforeseeable amounts of computing power. And um, exactly, yeah, you know, it, it's moving quickly, and it also makes me think about when you're talking about doctors and lawyers and accountants. I, mm. I remember when I was um, in the military, what they used to do is you, you've got military doctors, but you also had contracted doctors, and we had this contracted doctor that would come in, and we used to call him Doctor Google. And the reason why we called him Doctor Google is because every time, you know, it's like oh, I've sprained my ankle, or you know, I've, I've, I've hurt my wrist, or I fell off the something. You know, you've got some type of injury. He wouldn't even yeah. look at you. He would just go to Google and start typing in all of these things. <laughs> so it makes me think about, you know, with artificial intelligence, but when you're getting a prescription from a doctor, let, let's face it, they say, it's just a whole lot of questions. Okay, how old are you? Mm. What's your gender? What's your mili uh, exactly. military? What's yeah. your medical history? What's this? What's the symptoms? What does it happen here? And what happens there? So you answer all of those questions. And then at the other end comes, okay, well, a diagnosis. And then to that mm. diagnosis becomes, comes a treatment and that treatment is either some type of prescription or some type of you know physiotherapy or a bandage or, or whatever now of course doctors are going to get it very defensive of this but it kind of makes sense if i can just tell an ai right now like this is my name this is my age this is my gender this is my conditions this is where it hurts and then it comes back with a couple of confirmation questions that yeah. then passes on to the the real doctor who's like okay he, he's got a, i don't know a fractured leg put a mm -hmm. plaster on it but then we move into robotics. And this is where Steve was saying, how far away is the marriage between AI and robotics? And I actually look at the, the car industry as an example. So the car mm -hmm. industry was probably the first leader in robotics of taking mundane human tasks and then repeating those tasks over and over again. Now, of course, yep. fixing a leg is not the same as fixing or building a car. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, you can see, well, 
because AI can learn, and we now have the technology to see and program that into the computer, and the computer can learn from itself and learn from history, you know, maybe we're not too far away from those fields being sort of sourced out. Are there any other fields that you think that, well, I'm trying to say, in danger of AI? Are there any fields? What are the main fields where people are going to lose their jobs very quickly? Surprisingly, I think the fields that are in trouble are, are the fields that perhaps people didn't think would be easily replaceable before AI even came into the the mix. You know, I mean, AI, obviously, the, the concept of AI and there's been you know, products of AI that have been around for many years now, but it's only since ChatGPT came out, right, that it's actually exploded onto the mainstream in terms of its capabilities. Um, but I think that it's it's the highly technical jobs that are going to be replaced first and are already being replaced or those jobs that have always been uh, looked up to as, you know, the, the, the most respected jobs and, you, you know, when... People referred to, you know, your parents always want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, yep, it's always sort yep. of that, that conversation, right? So it's actually those dog, th those jobs that will, that unfortunately some, some areas of those jobs are being replaced already. So if you look at a lawyer, right, I have a friend who's a lawyer, a lot of what he, cause I worked remotely with him during the COVID period, right? And a lot of what he did was just writing emails. It was just reading through content. And uh, through, you know, a lot of documentation, very complicated, obviously, documentation, but um, it was a lot of emails that he was doing. It was mostly sort of emails and, you know, writing up various reports that can be automated by, by AI now, you know, obviously minus the dumping and sharing sensitive data. But like I said, there are software products that allow it to be centralized internally. So it doesn't breach uh, that sort of that uh, regulation piece. Uh, but even neuro uh, brain surgeons you look at brain surgeons they're being replaced by ai and robotics right because they have like a 99.99 percent accuracy yeah you know so yeah. it's 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 scary to think that those jobs are being replaced but then you have to ask the question to perhaps a family member that you know, may, maybe has a loved one that, um, you know, has uh, uh, some sort of brain injury, right? And the, the question is then asked, do you want to go through a human where typically, I don't know what the average is, let's say 90%, right? Or do you want to go through, you know, this top of the range advanced AI robot uh, that has a 99.99% accuracy? Do you know what I mean? So brilliant example. Yeah. Yeah. Th and, and so then you know that what I yeah. I, sorry to interrupt. I, I've used that example before when it comes to gender or color quotas. And it, that might sound a bit in your face, but really it, I, I give this example. I say, if you've got a loved one that's about to die on the operating table and they yeah. come out and they say, look, we've got this doctor who's been doing this for 30 years. He is so, well, they, I'll just keep it neutral. He is the best in yep. his field and he has a 1% mm -hmm. failure rate. But yeah. we've got this other doctor who met a gender and color quota and or religious mm. quota. Now, they've only been in the job for a few years, but the, the quota is really important. It's an extreme example, I realize, but when it comes down to it, that stuff doesn't matter. It, no, no one yep. cares. When your loved one's on the table, you just want the loved one to be, you don't care about quotas. What you care about is exactly. your loved one coming out the other side. And now we extend yep. it into artificial intelligence. You don't care about Dr. Smith keeping his job and maintaining his 10 bedroom house. Even if he's earned mm. it, what you care about is your loved one coming out the other side. And then when it in fact comes to law, um, precedence is a good example that you gave there. Case law is another example where they say, well, what's the precedence that was set here? And it's kind of like a medical thing where you say, right, these are the parameters of the case. I want you to go and find me a precedence in this case. And then it goes mm -hmm. through, you know, millions and millions of records before and goes, bang, there you go. Now, to the law, and if my lawyer is listening here, he'll, he'll disagree with me. But the, the truth is, when it comes to paralegals and the juniors who are given that task to go and find it, well, I don't need you anymore. I literally just type it into a prompt and say, find me case law. And it gives me three mm -hmm. examples or it says, no, there's no precedence that's set. And that takes away hundreds of hours of research that is needed there. Now, yep. it leads... It leads actually to another question from our friend Steve. It says, um, and this is to you, is AI programmatic or can it be taught to imagination? It's a great question. Steve is uh, king of the question. I told you he's deep. Yeah. <laughs> these are, yeah, re these are really well thought out. 
yeah, no, they're very, that's a very good question. I think that it can be taught and it will be taught to, I think what he's referring to here is perhaps sentience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for, maybe for, it's for when AI it. becomes sentient, where, when it has emotion and it can start dreaming like, <laughs> like I wrote, I robot, right. If we, if we go back to that reference where that particular, you know, the main robot, the main character can start, it can, it can dream and it tells Will Smith that it had a dream. And then, and then Will says, no, yeah. no, you AI robots can't dream, you know? So it, it look, it's, it's, that is the final step. The way I look at it, AI becoming sentient, becoming one with its emotions, the ability to imagine things or dream things that, that is uh, without a doubt the final step, you know? Um, so, and, and that's why if we tie that back to the jobs, right. And which jobs are being replaced uh, in the coming years, it will be that the last jobs to be replaced will be those that uh, are face to face essentially. Right. Because, that's the one thing that AI struggles to imitate at the moment, right? So there's a lot of things that AI can automate and that it's capable of doing. But one thing that it's not capable of doing at the moment is uh, being emotional, right? And creating its own emotions and imagining things and dreaming about things, right? That sort of face-to-face -face experience being, you know, a, a personable uh, person, having personality, right? Being funny, like yeah. all these things that, you know, separates human from robot is is literally that emotion right that part of the brain so when i think about the last jobs to be replaced that's that's the first thing that comes to mind is 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 face to face roles you know it could be sales it could be you know whatever it may be so that's yeah to answer your question i think it definitely is on the cards i think it's a long way away uh <laughs> And by a long way away, that could only be ten years. Who knows? But I, I think I think sentience is is the final step. Yeah. When you think about the movie Her that we were referring to before, um, yeah, I, I really like the part where she said she wrote the music. So yeah. she's like, I, "I've been yeah. working on this piece. I, I wrote you a song. Do you want to hear it?" And, and she plays mm -hmm. it instantly, mm -hmm. and and it's a beautiful um, piano piece, absolutely gorgeous. And I and I, and I said as I was doing my MBR, I had listened to this. Now, of course, in the movie it's all obviously made by a human but in the future you can see how that that will be playing out because i've asked chat gbt write me a joke yep. or tell me a joke <laughs> and, yep. and it actually comes yep. up with some pretty funny jokes and yeah yeah i've always said that when it comes to um comedians i've always said comedians have a higher level of social intelligence and the reason yeah. why they have a higher level of social intelligence because they have to take complex or touchy or confronting situations grasp mm. that situation and then reframe it in a way that is funny and the yeah. best comedians in the world that can do this their, their eq their emotional quotium is off the charts but then when i yeah. play this game with chat gpt and it can do it well the next extension is you say well write me a play with five characters that will make the audience laugh and cry and then yeah. you know, the thing is what really scares me sean what scares amazes mm. me it's, it's kind of so extreme is that it's so quick like i, mm. I would get it if you're too young to remember this, but t take a seat, young man. I'll tell you, when I was your <laughs> age, no, younger, when I was a boy and computers first came out, we used to, I can remember clearly to put a game on the computer. They come, <laughs> you won't believe this. I don't know if you've seen it. They used to come in cassette tapes and you'd mm -hmm. put the cassette tape into the computer, like a, a music cassette tape. And it was so, some of them actually had it in the keyboard. Uh, many of the viewers out there, you'll be nodding and others will be saying, what the hell is he talking about? Some computers used to have a cassette tape player <laughs> in the keyboard and you would put the cassette into the keyboard and you'd say, I want to play this game. So you basically upload the file, if you will. And it mm. took so long to upload the file that you'd go outside and, I don't know, kick a footy for a while. And then by the time you came in, the game was uploaded. Now, of course, mm. the, then it moved on to like, Nintendo 64. You just put the cartridge in and now it's kind of instantly and it happens over over the uh, Wi-Fi or over the internet, even satellite connections. Yep. Fast tracking that all to where we are now, when it says, when I said with the clucky story, I said, I want you to proofread this. I actually expected, because I put in a lot of text, a lot of text, and almost instantly 
it came out with a solution. And then when I said rewrite it as a Shakespearean play for adults, it, yeah. it goes, sure, no problem. And then it just, it just started pumping it out so quickly. So noting that it can produce these things so quickly, where I am concerned or maybe excited, I'm not sure, is that, as we've discussed, is that when AI starts learning from AI, when AI starts taking information from other AI, and then, as mm. you mentioned in the example with the two um, robots or AI, AI speaking to each other, they speak in their own language. They can actually mm -hmm. streamline the passage of information from point A to point B. An example of streamlining that information may have been when, maybe in MP4, as an example, when or MP3s. In the olden day, we used to have these wave files and these old files that took up a lot of space and were very slow to transfer. And then they compressed the files into MP3. And again, I'm showing my age. I can remember when a friend came over to my house and he goes, oh, Stokesy, you won't believe it. I can fit, I think it was nearly 100 songs onto a CD. And I'm like, no way, you can't do that. And he goes, yeah, yeah. They've got this thing called MP3. And I'm like, what's that? And it was just, of course, it was just the compression of a file to move these things into smaller, tighter areas, but without the loss of any quality. And of course, yep. now we're moving so quickly into this space. Um, apologies for the rants here, but you, you're actually stimulating a lot of my thought processes that I, I hadn't considered before. Mm -hmm. Do you think that AI will be writing new programming languages for us? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Uh, will we have to ask it to do it or will it just do it itself? Both. We could ask it to do it. We could ask it to do it now. I mean, it could try its luck. I don't think it would be able to, yeah, uh, you know, generate something um, that is, uh, you know, feasible of of uh, working across different systems and writing accurate code. But I definitely think that 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 will happen, and I don't think that's too far away. To be honest, um, I think that's only a few years, a few a few years away. Like, I mean, so if, if you, you look at that there's there's gpts right i'm not sure if you or the audience has heard of the, the latest updates with chat gpt this is gpt4 that i'm referring to here specifically the gpt store so uh open ai they released their own store so kind of like the apple store except for ai models right for uh dedicated gpts to automate and do x y and z and there's this one it's called uh it's called Grim Grimmer Code or something like this. And basically what it can do is this is a GPT that's already built to build websites, to build mobile applications. It can already do this. And to add to that, there's now a feature where you can upload photos to, to these GPT models, right? And you can assign it to the GPT. And what I mean by that is you can write down on an A4 piece of paper, right? You can design your website, what you want it to look like, right? I want a button here. I want a menu here. I want some buttons here. I want this and that there. You can upload that photo to the GPT and then it will start writing out the code and building the website in real time. Wow. Right, so that's where we are now. Mm. So you think about what you said with regards to you know, us telling GPTs to to create languages or other GPTs telling, you know, talking amongst each other to create languages, that is absolutely possible and it will happen. And I don't think we're too far away from that happening. So it, it, it makes me think then it, to really make money, um, let's face it, we're an economics and crypto channel here and a lot of people here to make money or at least analyze it. You, you can see, in my opinion, there's probably a very small window or maybe a big one than we realize of entrepreneurs who know how to ask the right question, they can mm -hmm. get this work done now. Like yeah. you could even, uh, of course, I went the simple way. Hey, uh, chat GPT, how do I get rich? But the question is too generic. The prompt is too generic. Mm -hmm. what, the, what a true entrepreneur will do is that they already know what the area is. I mean, or you could go back a step. You could say, hey, chat GPT, what is a gap in the market that needs to be filled? And they'll be like this. And you say, right, chat GPT, how do I build a web or build me a website to fill that or a product line or something like that. And it actually goes back to prompting, learning how yep. to prompt properly, which is a good segue into a question from Trevor. Trevor says, could you share the eight steps that you follow? What are these eight steps that Trevor's talking about? Yeah, I wrote them down recently because I've been asked this question many times and you'd think I'd know it off by heart by now, but I will share it 
with you and you can write it down because it will you will notice the difference in your outputs and you'll notice that the outputs being generated are very very accurate right so um, these are the these are the steps right so the first step is establishing the persona right so that's the first thing you want to be doing which means so what that means is writing something like uh, you are you are marketing gpt right so you want to establish a, a, a persona you are marketing gpt you are an expert at uh, digital marketing and seo right so or you could say, say something like pretend you are an seo specialist for example right search engine optimization specialist right so you establish the persona that's step one Step two oh, is on, establishing. So my apologies to, to intervene. You're saying you, you tell the chat GPT to establish their persona. Yeah, their persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so allow me to allow me please to ask really dumb questions here. So I could okay. say, uh, chat GPT, pretend you are a playwright. Is that exactly. an example? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah that's exactly it. So, right. so you want yep. to establish the persona. So pretend you are a playwright. Pretend you okay. are a... Yep a chef, et cetera, you know, and I'll start, oh, yeah. you know, writing recipes Pretend you're and so a doctor. forth. Right? Pretend you're a lawyer. Yeah. Li li literally anything, right? And and then this is where, so there are, we, we haven't touched on uh, the sort of bias yet. You've probably noticed bias with, with some of the outputs, right? You can get around Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So the way to get around that is there is a feature where it says custom instructions, right on chat gpt for instance there's custom instructions right so what you want to add in there so if if you've if you've ever tried to prompt ai chat gpt and you want to output and then it tries to give you some sort of bias political view or something like that you know what i mean it's like no just just give me the answer right the way to get around that the way to sort of jailbreak it is to put into to the custom instructions uh don't don't say this do you know what I mean? So just just give me the answer. Don't don't say, uh, uh, you know, I've been trained on X, Y, and Z due due to how I've been programmed. I can't do this. I can't say this. Right. So to get what, around so that, PM, PM is asking a question here, which I think links to what you're saying. He said, "I reach research prompts that are able to remove the guardrails on ChatGPT. Does Sean have any suggestions? Is that what you're talking about now?" Yeah. Yeah, so guardrails, um, yeah, presumably biases. referring to, yeah, biases, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just, that's, that's actually how you get around it. Yeah, it, yeah. Give me an example. It's, so how, how would I actually tell the, the chat GBT to remove it? Do I say, remove all biases? Do I say that? Be more specific. So when, so next time that you prompt AI, right, and it can't give you the answer but for whatever reason, it, it, it comes up with some sort of bias. Then whatever, however it it uh, writes its response, that bias, just copy that, paste it into the custom instructions, and just say, "Do not say anything like this" in quotation marks. Ah, okay. And that's the right. way to get around it, right? So, uh, and so get let to the them point present where, their biases first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Copy those biases and say, "Do not say this," or "Do not say anything yep. like this." Quotation yep. marks yep. of what they said. Yep. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. So incorporate that into the custom instructions and then that's sort of a way to get around that. There are other ways to get around it, but they're more sort of complicated um, and you, you have to find them on GitHub. And yeah, so that's that's more complicated, but that's one way around it. But so if, yeah, so, so step one, number one, establish the persona. Yep. Okay. Step number two, establish the action. Right, so you're telling it what it needs to do. Right, so if it's for SEO, you must create, or if it's for you know if you if you want to write a script, you must create. Right, so you want to establish the action of what you want it to do. Okay, and I'm then step three. Here, right? That's all right. And then step yeah. three is establishing the output and length. Right, so I'm I'm just going to use the example because it's, uh, you know, I've worked with clients and I've done a lot of this, which is uh, taking the persona of an of a marketing specialist, right? Because I think everyone has a pretty good understanding of how digital marketing works and search engine optimization, this sort of thing, right? 
So establishing the output and length. So you could say something like you must create a 2000 word SEO optimized blog, right? So that means that ChatGBT is going to create a blog, right? A 2000 word blog because you're defining the length, right? You're defining the output and length. So you're saying 2000 words. So be specific with the length that you want. And then SEO optimized. So then ChatGBT knows that whatever the topic we're going to discuss it's going to incorporate keywords relevant to that topic. Mm -hmm. Okay. That brings me to step four, which is establishing the task or the objective, right? So obviously step three, we said establishing the output and length, a 2000 word optimized blog. And then the task and objective is defining what that blog is going to be about. Okay. So on the topic of cold shower benefits, Okay, that could be, as an example, the task or objective that ChatGPT needs to achieve. You need to create a 2000 word SEO optimized blog on the topic of what are the benefits of cold showers. Okay, so that's step four. And so step by this five, stage, the, yep. the, the, the ChatGPT will be just going, yep, 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 and not actually yep. producing it's, it's, anything. It's, yeah, 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 this is just in the prompt. This is the prompt itself. Right, so we're not, I, we're not doing I'm, I'm individual. Yeah, so no, Trevor, no individual thank you prompts. for asking this question because at, at, yeah. I've never set it up this way. I've just gone straight to the end step of like, give me this. But what you're saying no, no, is no. before you get to this end step, you've got to set the you got to set the chat GPT up. Yeah. So so the one thing that I would separate here is step one. Yeah. Right. So step one, pretend you are a script writer or an author, and then hit enter. Right. And then it knows. Yeah. And then it's it's in its database. That that's what it's been. Uh, that's what it's been programmed to do. That's what that's what it is. It's now taken that persona, right? And then you yeah. continue on with, and then you uh, create the following prompt, which will list all the steps in one go. So you don't want to do separate because then it gets confusing, right? So just do all these steps from two down to seven. So it's actually seven steps, sorry. So two in down to seven. In one sentence. In one, in one prompt, yeah. Okay, yep, gotcha. Okay, so establish the action, two, three, establish the output and length, four, establish the task and objective, right? So we've defined now what the topic is about, what, what blog we're going to create. And then five, step five, is establishing the data and the resources, right? So we're defining now the credibility, right? Where is it getting this information from? Okay, now there are plugins that you can use that are built into ChatGBT. And these plugins allow you to scour not only the web in general, but specifically case studies, right? Clinical studies, all this sort of stuff, okay? So it can be as specific, specific as that so that when it generates the output, it's extracting data from actual data. Do you know what I mean? From, from actual uh, credible, reliable sources of information. And it can cite it. It can actually cite it. So when it generates the output, it'll cite. It'll 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 it will uh, generate the output to the text, right? While while scouring the web and incorporating an outbound link into the flow of the text. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just, yeah, absolutely, I do. I'm thinking about when I'm doing a university essay. I can say reference reference your. Uh, go, go to this library and reference every data in a Harvard style. And every time it refers exactly. to something, it'll reference. University yeah, it, it, is it, over. University exactly. is screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 it's like when, when you go, when you read an article, right? If you read a blog post, you'll see there's always outbound links, right? That, that will, it, it'll, yeah. it'll say something yeah. like, you know, the benefits of cold shower are, you know, you, you get your dopamine and your epinephrine and then the word epinephrine or the word dopamine will be highlighted and it's an outbound link that'll take you to where that data was sourced yeah. from. Yeah. So yep. ChatGBT can do all of that. So you no longer, if you're writing a blog, right, and this this literally blows people's minds. Like, uh, you know, I've spoken to CMOs, people pretty high up on digital marketing. And because, you know, typically you have to manually look for those websites and and you know highlight the link and then paste the link into the text chat gpt will do it for you now it will just do it it will just generate the text with the outbound link into the flow of the text as well seamlessly so it's not like 
obvious. You know what I mean? So that's step five. The, the, the only... The only limitation I can see with that, let, let me just um, do a thought experiment with you. And don't worry, viewers, I, I know yep. we'll revise all these steps. Yeah. You know how a lot of information is behind firewalls. So you can get information that's on open mm. source, you know, Google, as an example. You can just get on the World Wide Web. But then if I work for a government department or a, a university is a good example. So when some universities, Harvard, as an example, if you want to access a lot of the Harvard uh, peer review articles, you actually have mm. to join Harvard, as in not, not necessarily be a student, but you can actually pay to get, if you will, behind their firewall. And then mm. what that enables me to do is to research all of their peer-reviewed articles that are Harvard approved. The limitation I see at the moment is that ChatGPT Chat can only get up to that wall of Harvard or whatever's uh, on the other, or whatever's free from Harvard, but to get mm. into the other side of Harvard, this is where I actually see a cost is going to be involved. How does mm. the chat GPT get to the other side of Harvard and Yale and Stanford and the Department of Defense and the Department of Commerce and the Department of whatever? How does it get to the other side of those walls to get those info pieces of information? Yeah, so as far as I'm aware, it doesn't have access to that yet. Um, you know, I haven't noticed when it's cited the link, I haven't noticed any Harvard or Stanford uh links yet uh but what it can mm. get past what it can get past is a lot of credible sources where typically you have to sign up you've probably noticed right when you visit some websites as you're scrolling and you're about to read it a pop-up comes up and it, and it won't yeah, let you continue yeah. further until you sign up to an email or something it can it can bypass that as of right now so that's that's really? pretty good it can buy yeah so it can bypass that which is good uh, but it can't yet bypass, yeah, your Harvards and your Stanfords. But you know, you're still getting pretty credible sources uh, sources of information from the likes of uh, Mayo Clinic, which I'm pretty sure is uh, quite credible, from my understanding, at least from my doctor mate. Unless he's uh, <laughs> well, he's a, maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm running a thousand thought experiments at once. At once, firstly, what would happen in my opinion is that maybe you could say. Hey, ChatGPT, if you've got, you know, a long-term thing, a long-term relationship with it, you say, mm. I, I've now, here are all the passwords to all of these firewalls. Here's a password to the Harvard files, to the defense files, to the whatever files to get past that. So that might be one part. Another yeah. part might be, in fact, that although that information from Harvard is on their side of the firewall, someone else who's written an article that's published it on Google for free for everyone. They've actually referenced on the other side of the firewall. So they could in fact take a reference from something that is free that is referenced yeah. to something that is not free. And then the yep. other one I'm thinking of what they could do is in fact, I'm a huge believer in the future of microtransactions. That is, you know, the example that you just gave then when you start reading an article and a pop-up mm. banner comes through and it says, you know, join now. And yep. we'll let you read it. And you've got to put a $30 subscription in or whatever. Now, if chat yep. GPT, or just give us your email address. I think, obviously, artificial intelligence is going to counter artificial intelligence in the future, where you've mm. got chat GPT saying, right, we're going to get past that prompt. But then you're going to have a defense to that prompt and you're going to have this standoff. That's okay. But in the future, I'm a big believer that you're going to read news articles that are going to be paid, you know, a thousandth of a cent, as an example, per sentence. Yep. So if you want to read this article, instead of buying the whole news, art, uh, news article, instead of buying the whole newspaper, buying the whole magazine, instead of getting the monthly uh, subscription, you yep. can read the entire article for five cents. Mm -hmm. But then, and you, then could even... this you could give that money to ChatGPT and say, here's $5. If you need mm -hmm. it, go and mm -hmm. get all of this information. Yep. And yeah, I mean, I was just thinking... Thing. Yeah, yeah, I was just—I was literally just thinking that's where you can tie tie NFTs into it. Do you know what I mean? You can, you know, in, in, yeah. in, if if you want to be uh, become a subscriber to this newsletter, etc. Um, you know, here's here's this cool NFT. It could go up in value, but it also gives you access to X, Y, and Z. So yeah. Wow, I'm sorry to Very cut you off there. Look at it that way. What you're telling no, me no, 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 my brain. It's, so I, I one didn't even think of, I didn't consider that. It's very interesting. Yeah. There you go. Where where. Where real intelligence? What's the opposite to artificial intelligence? Uh, real <laughs> Human. intelligence. <laughs> Human in HR, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're HR learning from each other. 
So we establish yeah, yeah. the persona, we establish the action, we establish the output and length, we establish the task or objective, we establish the data and the resources, step mm -hmm. six. And then lastly, you want to establish the tone, right? So the tone of voice, the tone out, so meaning the writing style, essentially. How, how do you want it to sound to the reader? So for example, if it's, you know, in this instance, we're generating a blog post, right? How do we want that to be written? How do we want it to sound to the reader? Is it is it conversational? We want to make sure that it's engaging, right? We could, like I said earlier, we could, you know, we could prompt AI to, to write this blog post on the topic of cold shower benefits in the style of Donald Trump. So, you know, it could be anything. And then it will start, it will start playing with that and then and then generate generating a specific uh, uh, writing style. So that's that's the last point. Uh, wasn't there eight? I've got six. Was there eight uh, steps? Yeah, I suppose the, the, the last one, they're, they're the major ones, I suppose, as an extra. The, the reason I haven't added this in is because it's dependent on what you're trying to do, right? So the last step would be defining the demographic, right? Defining the audience. Who, who what, what are you writing? You know, for instance, if you're, if you're asking ChatGBT to write a copy ad, right? That's going to be for Facebook ads or TikTok ads. Then you can define the audience, right? You can, you can uh, ask ChatGBT to generate the output so that it's geared towards, uh, I don't know, 60 plus year old women. Do you know what I mean? So then mm -hmm. it won't start using, I don't know, recent sort of slang and terminology. So you can go as far as defining the, the demographic. But again, that's dependent on what you're trying to do. Well, I think the the best example. I, I didn't do any of this, but with my children's book as an example, I said, uh, you know, write yeah, a fairy tale exactly. for children, and then I said, yep. do it for older people, uh, and, yep. and it did, and, and it did it brilliantly. So, yep. just to reestablish this, I, I'm, I'm actually doing this in two prompts. The first yep. prompt is one. I'm establishing the prompt, uh, the persona. I'm persona. saying, yeah. Uh, so what I literally say, you are a doctor. Yeah, you are a doctor. We're, we're, Yep. Okay. And then it you goes, it was just say, but, but, yep. but, but, but perhaps be more specific. You know, I would even try and be more specific. What sort of doctor? Okay. Are you, 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 you know are I mean? a, a general practitioner treating a patient who is coming to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Yeah. And then the, the steps two to seven or two to eight or two to six that I, then I put all, all in of one that prompt. in one prompt. Gotcha. All in one prompt. Yeah. And so what your industry would do people who are too scared of this or don't understand it you're now in a position where people will pay you, you to do this yeah so i've worked with clients uh to essentially do what i'm doing now which is you know teaching teaching people how to talk to ai right because i think most people well i mean there's a lot of people out there that haven't used chat gbt but there's there's a lot of people out there who have used chat gbt and they prompted it once they didn't get the desired output. They thought it was stupid. They gave up and that was that, mm. you know? Yeah. So there hasn't been a single output that I haven't wanted to generate that ChatGPT hasn't been able to generate. And that's just down to my, I mean, obviously I'll be at, you know, when, when I was first testing out ChatGPT, when it first came out, obviously I was trialing it, right? I was trial and error, trial and error, trial and error until I got the desired output. But once I realized that, oh, hey, you need to be very specific. You need to be very elaborate in your in your prompts. You need to structure it accordingly to get the best possible prompt. Then I started just following that framework over and over again, right? Um, and that's yeah. That, that I've obviously leveraged the, the the fact that I've nerded out on AI and I've been using it every day. I've I've, I've leveraged that to to help teams of businesses talk to AI to be able to automate like I said, mundane tasks so they can focus on higher value activities. So my background is primarily recruitment. So I know exactly what can be automated in recruitment, right? So the last company I worked with, even for myself, right? I've, because I do a bit of recruitment, right? So even for myself, I've automated at least 90 minutes of my day, Right, so they can I can focus on higher value activities. Higher value wow. activities mean meaning mapping out the market, 
right? So, so because obviously a big part of my job is, is trying to bring in new business, you know, so that's, that's a high value activity is to map out, map out the market, right? And think of strategic sort of angles to, to bring in new business, right? So then I can automate things like emails. I can automate things like job descriptions, uh, job postings on LinkedIn, uh, you know, even some messages, outbound messages. And you'll, you'll see that, you know, perhaps some people here in the audience have noticed on LinkedIn, they've already started incorporating these into their features where you can, if you want to send a message to someone, you press one button and it will just generate the whole thing. Although I wouldn't recommend doing that because it's pretty terrible, to be honest. I would recommend just doing your own prompt and personalizing it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 pretty it's it's pretty incredible. But that can, you know, you can expand on that. It goes outside of recruitment, like I said, with with marketing. The amount of time that it takes typically before AI was introduced to the word uh, world, you think about how long it took to, uh, to write a two, 3,000 word SEO optimized blog with outbound links seamlessly incorporated into the flow of the text. That takes ages. And ChatGBT mm. can do that in about 10 minutes and it can do it really, really well. I've actually built my own website. Uh, it's called restfulremedy.com. I'll just do a little shill there. Uh, but that's for... That's for educating people on the importance of sleep, uh, you know, and tying that in with meditation and mindfulness and resilience. So if you have, and this will actually be a good uh, sort of thing to, to have a look at, actually. So if, 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 if the audience, if you check out, so restful rem, restfulremedy.com. Now, the, now, I'm not doing this to shill it. It's more so to show you that everything on that website was completely generated by AI. Not only the blogs, but also the imagery. Everything you see there was completely generated by AI. And that's an affiliate um, marketing website. I'm just uh, adding it to the text now. Uh, just confirming I'm shilling the right one. R-E-S-T-F-U-L remedy.com. That's correct. It's got yeah. a little koala on a moon. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that so koala, that's the logo. That was generated through AI. All the imagery, all the text, it's all AI. So that, that gives you for an free? understanding. For free? Why is ChatGPT free? What are they getting out of it? If uh, you know, The saying is, if you're not paying for the product, then you're the product. Are we the product here? A three point, yeah, oh, that's a good question. Um, 3.5 I know is definitely free. Four, I'm not sure. Is, is four recently free? I'm looking I'm at not it now. Sure. I'm, I'm looking at online. It... So th three. So Chat GPT 3.5 is free. My understanding is four is still paid, which is really, really advanced capabilities of 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 um, GPTs. And then you have imagery generators like uh, Leonardo or Midjourney, and they give you a cap. It's free, but you get a cap. But it's enough. Okay, you just cut out there. I've got you back now. I'm going to share. I'm going to present this uh, just to the viewers out there. Just showing this now. While I'm sharing it, I've got a question from Wonder Woman. Now, Wonder Woman is a longtime part of the community. I'll just share this now. So that's confirming that's your site there, Restful Remedy. That's the site, yep. Okay, so from Wonder Woman, she says, uh, early question, she says, Evening, Adam and guests, how can I communicate with AI prompts effectively to create art? I would like to be created and which platform do you recommend? So two parts to this one. So we, we've spoken about now some text-based stuff. What about when it comes to art and which platform are you using? Yeah, good question. Uh, so the cool thing about this, and this is kind of, this is kind of like a marriage almost, I suppose, between, you know, chat GBT and mid journey, because what you can do is you can use ChatGBT to generate the prompt to use to create the art on another AI platform, right? So wow. if I'm going to say that again, you can use <laughs> ChatGPT to yeah. create the prompt, then to give it to yeah. another artificial intelligence platform. That's that's correct. Yeah. So if if you are struggling to come up with your own prompt to create the art that you want AI to create then you can articulate it to ChatGPT. You could say, hey, I'm using Midjourney. I want to create X. Can you please create a prompt for me that will allow me to generate this piece of art on Midjourney? 
Now, why do I have to go to chat GPT there? Because the chat GPT will make a better prompt for mid journey. You don't have to, you can just go straight to mid journey and come up with your own prompt. But if you're struggling with coming up with a prompt yourself, if, if, I don't know, you're lacking creativity and, you know, a bit of a writer's block, then you can go to chat GBT to generate that prompt for you. Um, but you don't have to, uh, me personally, I just go straight to mid journey for instance, and I put in a pretty basic prompt, you know, I can put in something like, and there are a lot of parameters. So the thing with mid journey, that's a whole different beast in itself, right? Cause chat GBT is relatively straightforward, right? You're just giving it text. You're just prompting it. You're not really. The, per, the parameters that I mentioned, the structure, that seven sort of eight step approach, that is still just text. Do you know what I mean? But with mid journey, so with image AI generators, you not only have to provide text, the prompt itself, but you need to define parameters, right? So what I mean by that is things like, you know, the the, the scale size that you want, the the type of camera lens that you want to use, the, the 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 style of animation. These all need to be specified using specific parameters. So is it's, this it's a right little more complicated. That I'm looking at? That's correct. Is this yeah, the right yeah. Side? So mid, that's it. Yep. So you sign up to Mid Journey, uh, but the place where you generate the art, it's all through Discord. <laughs> you made. So, a, let's bring it down to practical. I asked you to make to make a photo for my book. Yeah, and I love yeah. the the image that you made of me with with my cousin Rebecca. Because for everyone yeah. out there, in case you're wondering what we're talking about, in the book, yeah. where did I get Clucky from? I got Clucky from my cousin Rebecca, who has um prize chickens and i gave you these details and the image that you produced was so good i'm like man i wish yeah. i looked that good and my cousin looked great as well and the chickens look great and the farm looks great and everything looked fantastic and you yeah. did you do all of that through mid journey i did it all through mid journey which is but so basically this is their landing page but once you sign up to mid journey it's going to essentially give you an invite link to discord and that's where you're creating the images right but the now there is an alternative. Is... There yep, is an alternative on. to Mid Journey. So the alternative to Mid Journey, if you don't want to go through Discord, because I know the UI UX of that is an ideal, um, there is an alternative, and that's Leonardo. So Leonardo dot AI, I believe. They're actually an Australian company. Uh, here we just correct that. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, that's, that's still correct. Yeah, so they're, they're an Australian company based out of Sydney. They are growing rapidly at the moment so to give you so to give you guys sort of some insight as to how popular ai art is mid journey on discord is now the single largest discord channel on all of discord like i'm talking about 15 million members concurrently every day it's crazy we just cut out then for a second. You said it, it's gaining 15 million members a day? Uh, no. So it, it has 15 million members concurrently each day using it. It's it's the single biggest uh, channel on Discord. It's 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 crazy. Is there a, a token link to this? Is it got anything to do with crypto? No. I don't believe there's any sort of crypto narrative here. So I, I these... played with this one. And, and oh, it yeah. was very good and it was there was different styles but the, the, the thing is as we discovered is that in when writing the book was i what i wanted to say to leonardo was these are the characters this is adam this is ding ding this is leela this is dino this is clucky and then yep. i wanted to use those characters on different pages of the book and it wouldn't mm -hmm. let me do that and, and as you pointed out in an email you said no no we've, we've basically got to rebuild the character every mm -hmm. single time we're making a new page. And I'm like, well, that's not going to work. So yeah. how far are we to building? Because I think what, what's happening is when yeah. it comes to NFTs as well, you can see where NFTs with the visual art is, you know, how's it going to have value when you can just create art so quickly, so easily just by telling a computer program to do it. And even if it doesn't come out exactly as you want it, who cares? <laughs> you know, if it's a good picture and you can sell it as an NFT, yeah. so be it. So when... When we actually look at building characters in visual NFTs, sorry, visual AI, what's lacking there? What are we waiting for? 
in terms of building a story like we were trying to do with Clucky. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not sure what's missing there, per se. But, because you know... In, uh, I also yeah, think like about I, movies. You know, like if I want to make a movie, because mm. we, we spoke about artificial intelligence, you know, making music. And then it, yep. it seems pretty obvious that the next thing is, is you, you culminate the whole lot. You say, make me a movie about Clucky the Chicken. <laughs> and it will, <laughs> it'll take all the characters, it'll make a script, and yep. it will just pump it out into a visual. Now, maybe it'll take two hours to render and to build, but who cares? Mm -hmm. But until we can actually establish characters, is it, is it just that we're so early in this and we're, we're already getting ahead, ahead of ourselves? We're, we're pretty early. To be honest, uh, I mean, Mid Journey only really started taking off last year. It was like the beginning of last year. And it's up to version six now. And the difference between, oh, actually, that there, 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 there is an image that has a side by side comparison of like version one to version six of what Mid Journey can uh, generate based on the exact same prompt. And it is, it's incredible. So, we're not far off. So in terms of it generating a sequence or a story, I think that could be here by the end of the year, to be honest. Just, wow. just given the rate, given the rate in which it's evolving. If you look at version one mid journey AI art images to version six, it's like night and day. Well, what, what, just after our discussion, it just seems obvious that we, we tell Chat GPT to program it. Just say, make yep. me a program that enables me to build characters in a book and then use that character throughout. And again, it's just the right prompt to it. Man, my, yep. my, my mind is melting here. And I, I do apologize for continually interrupting, but it's, um, we've oh, got fine. all the time in the, in the world, but it, it's so important because as you know, I'm big into crypto, but I absolutely see an overlap in crypto and artificial intelligence. And when I've had Joshua Gala on here, he speaks about the importance of proof of work with artificial intelligence and what's going to happen. Yep. In the future with a lot of these projects there's going to be a lot of scams that are coming out and saying we're the next ai cryptocurrency but i think it's important yep. to before we actually bridge if you will or link for our investors out there which is a lot of us before we start merging the worlds of crypto and ai the reason why i've brought you on here is because i, I feel i've got a good grasp of crypto but I, I haven't yet got the good grasp on ai and so now that these mm -hmm. two worlds are going to merge i think for all of us out there for all the viewers it's really important that we understand both worlds separately and then how they merge together. But then of course the next layer to this is, is robotics. Mm. You know, what's going to happen when robots and, and you know, th there's in the medical world, they're making artificial wombs and yeah. there's so much talk about, you know, guys being left behind, but I think maybe we're all going to be left behind. And if you can I mean, really think about it, there's an epidemic of lonely people out there. And if mm -hmm. people are quite happy to, marry ai or have a relationship with ai and then you have bots that come into it and even if people say well that's gross well girls have been using their sex toys for years and that's a form of yeah. robotics and then if you throw you know <laughs> artificial intelligence onto it and then you can throw yeah. some house chores onto it is it you know people might go oh we're not doing that but i i remember back in the day when online dating came out i i can remember before there was tinder and everyone's like no nah, I'd, I'd never use tinder and then tinder got so big that there's all these competitors that came to it. and online dating. Now, most people are meeting online and they don't even think mm. about it, but yeah, I clearly exactly. remember when that came out, everyone was like, Oh, I would never use that. That's for desperate, gross perverts. And it's like, yeah, well, that was kind of the standard. And then as we move yeah. into artificial intelligence and robotics and artificial wombs and programmable love, if you will, and relationships, it, the stuff gets pretty scary. Yep. It does. I, I mean, yeah, it's 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 very it's very dystopian like I think when you start linking those two together, right? AI girlfriends, that's that's when it starts getting um yeah, a bit scary, but you know, unfortunately it's it's difficult out there. You know, the dating game, I I was only speaking to my uh, my 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 granddad who who recently passed and and I, you know, was fortunate enough to spend a, a good bit of time with him. Um in the last six months, but I kept telling him, you lived through the best era. You know, I kept telling him you th lived through the best era because dating, this sort of thing, it was all meeting in person. 
you know and i think where this lonely sort of uh epidemic is coming from is it's it's difficult online dating right because it's it's not based on meeting someone face to face and personality showing that you you know you're a good person it's all purely based on looks you know so it makes sense that uh these you know some people are going to be reliant on ai girlfriends and are going to want that and there's going to be yeah. that bucket of people that you know can't they, they 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 almost feel like defeated in the real world do you know what i mean because they they they're they're, they're, const, they're they're constantly judged on how they look because that's what it is nowadays i think a a a, a statistic came out saying like 80 or 90% of all relationships are formed through dating apps you know and you think about people who yeah they they're, they're based purely on their looks and it's difficult for them so what other option is there well there's this ai girlfriend that can care about me and can say that i look beautiful so yeah it, it just it doesn't to surprise me. me yeah it doesn't yeah. surprise me that we're going down this path to be honest and it doesn't surprise me that there are people that want that yeah the <laughs> You do thought experiments, and the looks thing is is right up there. Like there's um yeah. these studies now that I, I'm lucky. I, I was blessed with height, so and, and I never took it for granted. Like I'm six three, and I'm not the tallest guy yeah. in the world, but I'm not the shortest guy in the world. You yeah. and I have met in person. You're all tall yeah. dude yourself, yeah. but the amount of guys that are, you know sort of below the six foot, and I don't even think that's that short. But once they start to get mm. five ten, five eight they're mm. screwed and not because yeah. not in the good way <laughs> they're, they're, they're not getting screwed because there's just like oh no you're too short for me and it's like well what about mm. all these other characteristics of this guy it's like no, no, no he's just got to be tall so straight away yeah and especially when yeah. you can map it out that cuts out like 60 percent, 70 percent of the dating pool straight away and once you get exactly. past six two six three it's, it like drops it down to like you've got 10 percent remaining then you go on to yep. the looks as you described sean and then you, you have actually what the, the i guess the world of abundance now I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your grandfather but i'm, I'm glad you shared that story okay. with me because yeah. what we see is in the olden days is that when your grandfather was dating mm. he he basically had what was around him but equally so did the girls they they basically had to have what was around them you know because you didn't mm. have the online dating you didn't have the travel freedom that we have at the moment so you really had who's in your school who's in your town and there's your dating pool but yep. through nature, that actually lined up people with people and li maybe living happily ever after. But then you have this, the perceived or actual reality of abundance. And it's just like, nah, swipe left, swipe left, next, 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 next. And then they finally get someone. And even if they're a really good person, it's like, mm. well, I've, I've got so many other choices and it's so easy. Like, it's not difficult to get a date. It's just like, just swipe again. And so you're dead right when it comes to the remainder those who are left it's like well i'm not i'm not getting anything anyway and and, and unfortunately yeah. when i expand on this into the economic space um there's a lot of guys and, and maybe girls as well that that aren't striving in the way they used to you know to, to get mm. the job to get the career to get to the wife to get to the kids to get to the the family to get to the dream of you know having a relationship and a family because yeah. it's like well no one's going to date me because i'm five foot so mm. why am I going to go to work? So screw it anyway. I'm just going to eat my Cheetos and play the computer games. And it's this yeah. cascading It's a effect. ripple effect. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And it goes all the way down. It's like, well, and then you have the other side. And, and I knew this conversation would take us into deep places. You know, you've got all these young guys and out there saying, well, you're not wanted. You're toxic. We don't need you. Um, we mm. hate you. You're evil. And so, so guys are just checking out. And, and this is exactly. where I see the the rise the rise of AI dating. It's like, well, I, I'm hated yeah. it anyway. I've been brought into a world that like men are bad, white men are bad. I'm mm. toxic. I'm evil. I'm a molester. I'm a right. and all these bad things that are just thrown out to me. It's like, oh well, I'll, I'll just check out. Yeah. But now they it's, have an option. It's it's difficult. Like it's it's a process in of itself, you know. And even even if you do get past, you know, you you match with with that particular person on a dating app, right? Even if you do get past that part, that's not even the main inbox. You're still in the side inbox, right? Yeah. So when you look at dating apps, you you match yeah. with someone on Tinder or Hinge or Bumble, right? That's not even the main. You're still competing. You're still competing, right? Because you're in the side inbox. The main inbox is Instagram, is WhatsApp, is Messenger. You still have to go from the dating app 
to the main inbox, from the main inbox to to meeting in person. You know, so it's a it's such a ma- it's it's a, it's, a, it's a huge process. It's draining. Absolutely. It's draining for a lot of people. So what's easier, going from winning this person in the side inbox to uh, winning them in the main inbox? all while keeping their attention, keeping them entertained, you know, it's draining and then getting to meet them in person. And, you know, what's easier doing that or getting an AI girlfriend. So, yeah. And that's before we even talk about the cost, like yeah. dating it's is expensive. so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tr- and, I'm a single and, man. Tr- trust me. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It's very, very expensive. It, yeah. And you're a good looking guy. Yeah, you know, no, nothing sus out there, but I've met you in person. You, you're a good looking tall guy. And it's like, you should be out there getting him to it. But even you, in, I would suggest, yeah, in the top, t- you're, you're, in my opinion, you're probably in the top t- 10% guys. You're smart, good looking out there, capable, able bodied, tall. And even for you, it's so tough. But then when you're an entrepreneur, like, a- am I really going to give up? You know, all the, the the hours and hours of driving there, picking it up, spending the money, doing this, doing that, just mm. to be rejected. It's just like, uh, and even yeah, if exactly. I'm not rejected, it's like, I, I just can't be bothered. I just can't yeah, be bothered. And then you have the exhausting. alternative. Oh, yeah, it, it's absolutely exhausting. It's very different to when I was 17, you know, and, and particularly now that I've, I've got a lot of money uh, yeah. and what you will uh, come in through as well. It, it's even though I can afford it. I, I'm mm. not going to be used. I'm not going to be used and I just stay away from it entirely. So that, that brings a new dimension to it. The irony is here that I think maybe a lot of the girls out there don't understand is that when you don't have money, it, it's a big ask to spend all of this money. But then mm. when you do have the money, it's like, no, I'm no simp. I don't need you and I'm not going to blow this money. And, the, and then the, the response is, well, you're a titan. And it's like, well, that's, you're exactly the person I don't want to date. If you're exactly. only using me for my money, I'm out. <laughs> exactly i mean it's 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 tough you know it's really tough you you know you can't just be back in the day perhaps you could get a you could get away with uh, one particular attribute characteristic right you could get away with just being good looking or just being funny right but now you have to be all of these things you know you have to be yeah. you have to be good looking you have to be tall you have to be charismatic you have to be funny interesting stories to tell um rich financially successful you know you have to be ticking all these metrics otherwise it's 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 going to be really difficult yeah and then you say one thing wrong and even if you've got all of that yeah <laughs> and it's all over mate deep yeah, um exactly. i'll bring it back to the viewers here um before we get into a romantic dating show but i, I really <laughs> appreciate it can i ask how old are you? you don't have to give me the exact age but you're in your 20s yeah yes yeah, that'll do. Um, I'm no, I'm, well, thir- I'm 31. I'm 31. Yeah, we'll but go with 20. Yeah, you must I'm, use I'm great 31, skincare. but yeah, yeah, it's it's good to know that I'm, I I look like I'm in my 20s. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Especially if you're up north and the bloody sun's up there, so hot. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to do a rapid round here with some questions from the audiences because I've been I've stolen the show and it really it's about the community here. So allow me to very quickly pump through the, some of the audience questions out there. Finbear says, what about AI realizing the truth that doesn't matter? There are cases where AI, ca- this is a good question. There are cases where AI came up with imaginary court cases that were presented as real precedents in court. Also, the skew to the left is a problem. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh... I've heard of fake references. They couldn't find the reference, so they made up the reference. And then here's the other thing is once this chat GPT, once this AI makes a reference, then the other AI re- refer- refers to the <laughs> to the fake reference that was made up by the fake mm. referencer. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it also strangely, well, I mean, not so strangely, it does depend on the type of uh, model that you're using, right? Because there are quite a lot of different models out there. At, you know, the most popular is chat GPT by OpenAI. There's also Grok, which is Elon's baby by, you know, X. So in order to use Grok, you need to actually have premium on X, right? There's Mistral. There's a bunch of different models which are trained on different data sets, right? Which means that the output varies and it can vary significantly, right? So sometimes it can skew to the left, skew to the right. Uh, sometimes it will... Uh, you know, it will extract information that is false or, you know, against regulation. So it, it's really, it's really dependent upon how uh, those data sets are trained. 
Yeah. The uh, second part is it makes me think Finn Bear says, uh, first of all, Lex says he's seen her several times. <laughs> yeah, good on you, Lex. Finn Bear says, there is an AI that can resurrect a dead person from their old text messages and such, quite morbid. Have you seen Black Mirror? Black Mirror? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that episode. That, yeah. That, it's... Yeah. So for the it's viewers crazy. out there who don't know what we're talking about, Black Mirror is a series on uh, Netflix, and there is an oh, episode yeah. on there where there's a couple, I think they're a British couple, and, and the husband dies. And then yeah. she's really upset and the, the wife's really distraught. And then someone says, well, actually, there's this new company that can build you, your husband again. So there's two parts to it. This is the relationship of robotics and AI. And the company delivers a, a robot version of her husband. And he's almost perfect to the point that there, there was a, remember there's that scene where she goes, oh, you don't have this mole that was here. And he goes, oh, I yeah. had a mole there. And he just you know, created the mole on his skin. I thought that was kind of cool. But basically, as yep. Finbear is saying, the artificial intelligence went through all the videos, all these emails, all these texts, all the images, all the everything, and basically yep. reprogrammed the dead husband into this mm. robot. And at first she fell in love with him, mm. but then she was just like, she kept him in the, the closet, if you remember, the attic at the end of it. Um, yeah. Have you heard about this really happening, or is it just something that we see on Black Mirror? Yeah, no, this is happening. So this is uh, this is as dystopian as it gets because I I don't like the thought of this at all. To be honest, when it comes to you know uh, loved ones passing away and so forth, but this you know early iterations, early iterations are out there. They're not quite how they look in black mirror or how they act but it's coming it's definitely coming so it's just the so the 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 text output so them speaking the ai speak the ai speaking that is your past loved one that output that's being generated that can be done quite easily right now right um so that's obviously as finn bear mentioned uh extracting all that data right all the text messages between the husband and the wife or you know whoever it may be right as well as the images right so then it takes that data set uh, from the text messages and then it understands its persona right so that's back to step one that's literally it's establishing a persona from taking all those text messages compiling together and then creating a personality right so that's step one step two is obviously taking the images from the social media account and then using those generative AI art tools to generate uh, literally a replica of that person. And then the final step, which is where, where we aren't quite there yet, which is uh, holograms, right? And oh, yeah. hologram, yeah. hologram is iteration number one, but then obviously iteration number two will be an actual robot, you know, themselves who look exactly, you know, prosthetics, look and feel. But... Uh, yeah, to, to, to answer the question, as soon as we uh, have sort of advanced technology with holograms, we're, we're, we're already there. It's literally like, you know, you watch Star Wars and you have the, yeah. the, the holograms pop up and, they're, and they, it's, it's literally that person in another location. That, that's how it's going to be and that's not far away. So that to me is complete and utter dystopia when, when you start dragging the debt back to life. Yeah, I don't like that. The cross pollination of these industries, like I often talk about cars as an as an analogy of how a car is a symphony of so many different mm. technologies. Like think of the technology just in a tire, or the wheel, or an internal combustion yeah. engine, or a gearbox, or a digital dash, and now we've got artificial intelligence coming into vehicles. Mm. When I see artificial intelligence now coming into bots, as what we're describing with resurrecting the dead. Mm -hmm. you, you can actually see, so you've got, on one hand, you've got Tesla building bots that do stuff to, you know, mm. I don't know build a house. Yeah. Then you've actually got the sex industry, which has been around for ages. So they're building sex bots and sex toys that have been around for ages. <laughs> then you've got computing and battery technology that's coming in. And then you're going to have, in my opinion, you're going to have the, the symphony of all of it coming together. Now, whether it's mm. good or bad, th that's for a different discussion. I, I think it, it's absolutely coming. And I... I you can see that even if artificial intelligence doesn't take over the world like iBot or Terminator, as an example, you know, mm. kill all the humans because humans bad, 
maybe it just results in us. We, we just love the technology so much that we end up killing ourselves. We can you see population shrinkage in many nations. Uh, Korea's in a lot of trouble. Japan's in a lot of trouble. Even yep. parts of the West are in a lot of trouble because we're, mm. <laughs> we're simply not even reproducing. Throw in artificial yeah. intelligence. Yeah, yeah I know. And it goes to the next uh, level. Uh, yeah, I mean, the yeah, as you said, the birth rates are already declining at a rapid rate if you compare it to, you know, 5, 10 plus 20 years ago even. It's... It's it's pretty significant, but yeah, when you throw AI into the mix, and then AI girlfriends, and then even metaverse, and people don't want to exit the real world because you know they're really cool and they have all the different power ups, and you know, yep. basically the th th those yep. yeah those those kids that couldn't be those cool kids in school, right? Kids that were nerds in school can now be the cool kids in a virtual environment with their AI girlfriend, you know. So, and that's obviously going to result in yeah. <laughs> A, a, a rapidly declining birth rate right because people aren't meeting each other or well, men aren't yeah yeah so. and, and and even when you look at um i mentioned the movie surrogates again there's a there's a scene in that movie surrogates where soldiers instead of soldiers going out to the battlefield and fighting they use a surrogate where this the the nerd if you will the soldier mm. Mm -hmm. just taps into his computer, just sits in a chair and just plugs into his surrogate who goes out to the battlefield. And the surrogate mm -hmm. goes out and fights other surrogates and other people. And then when the surrogate is blown up or killed, he just mm -hmm. gets into another surrogate and runs out to the battlefield. And and maybe, yeah. you know, next level, that's how dating is done, either whether in the metaverse, <laughs> when I say blown up or killed. <laughs> well, it sometimes <laughs> feels like that in dating. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter because it's not even you. It's your surrogate. It's your... It's your uh, what's the word that uh, yeah, your avatar, your avatar that's going out into the world mm -hmm. either physically or digitally. I'll just touch on the, the three laws that because many have uh, referred to it. So PM said the second law is that the robot shall not uh, shall obey any instruction given to it by humans. So we're talking about the three mm -hmm. laws of robotics in iRobot. And I thought they were very powerful. The first mm -hmm. law is that a robot shall not harm a human or by inaction, allow a human to come to harm. The second law is that uh, the robot shall obey any instruction given to it by a human. And the third law is that a robot shall avoid actions or situations that could cause harm to it uh, or its or itself, uh, could mm. cause harm to come to it or itself. Uh, but I actually thought the third law was you can't undo the first two laws. Or the, but um, in any way, when we program robots, no. maybe maybe we can program these these three laws into it that you can't hurt others go do as humans say and you can't allow um your harm to come to yourself or to humans or contradict the first two laws trevor says with ai becoming yeah. cheaper faster smarter uh, what value do you see people being able to provide to society that ai won't be able to good question from trevor what can yeah, AI, great question. yeah what what can people do so you touched on it before with the service industry. Mm, if mm -hmm. you if you don't mind, I'll go first. Um, yep, go. An example is that there is an industry now for hugging, not prostitution, not sex work. It's hugging. Now there was a study okay. done in the Second World War, a fascinating study, where they took a whole lot of babies, and you can probably guess where the babies came from. But it's it's a confronting study, but it's a study nonetheless. And they took yep. 100 babies. I can't remember the exact number, but they put 50 babies, for argument's sake, in one room and 50 babies in another room. And everything was the same. They had the same heating, lighting, cooling, blankets, beds, food, water, shelter. But room A, the babies had contacts with human beings. And room B, they didn't have contact with human beings. And all the babies in room B died. And wow. it showed, yeah, yeah, it showed that we need human interaction. Now, let's extrapolate this into the, and the references to that study are hard to confirm, but I've got it from multiple sources over my time. Um, but I'm more than happy for people to come in and, and reference that study. It is a pretty confronting study. Yeah. You, you then go on to, as we get older, there's an industry now where you can <laughs> hire a hug. And you literally, and, and men and women are equally using it. And you literally just go to a professional hugger and you either stand up or lie down, leave all your clothes on, and you just hug. That's it. And I link those two studies, if you will, or industries, so to speak, together. 
And with Trevor's thing saying, you know, with AI becoming cheaper, faster, smarter, what value do you see people being able to provide to society that AI won't be able to? And I would say maybe Trevor, maybe just a handshake or a hug. Maybe that would be an industry that AI could never replicate. Noting that bots are getting pretty human-like. What are your thoughts, brother? Yeah, I agree. I mean, just that that sort of human element, um, as I touched on earlier, um, I, I feel I honestly believe that the last jobs to be replaced, uh, if it comes to that point where, you know, there's there's only a few jobs left, uh, I think it will be the face-to-face jobs, you know. So face-to-face sale, it could be, you know, door knocking, knocking on someone's door, face-to-face sales, face-to-face interaction just in general. I think that is one thing that, I mean, AI can't do now, certainly not, and it won't be able to do even in the near future. It's a very long way away from developing, to to be able to program it in a way where it can develop a consciousness, you know, where it can, Mm. where it can react to, and, and they're training it at the moment, but it could be, you know, very subtle reactions that people have where it's like you know you say something it's like oh okay i can see that he's being sarcastic or i can see that he looks a little bit upset you know just those very subtle reactions that humans are very good at uh, detecting on average so that is something that we're we're vastly better at uh but yeah on the contrary how far are we away from them replicating that i'm not sure maybe maybe that's where AGI and deep learning comes into it and where, you know, like you said, AI starts training AI, you know, and because if we're going to get there, I don't think it's going to be from pure human intervention in terms of humans only doing the programming that gets us to, well, gets AI or robots to that point where they develop a consciousness, when they become sentient, that doesn't happen by just humans alone. I think that is expedited when it's ai training ai right so that's that's when we have to tie it back to regulation right and what elon elon musk said on joe rogan's podcast where we need to be we can't take we can't take 20 years to regulate it do you know what i mean or you know the reference that you made with irobot the three laws we we need to be strict on that and we need to implement it as soon as possible because yeah just the rate at which it's evolving ai it's 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 exciting, but it is it is scary to be honest. So, and as you referred to at the beginning of the interview, is like um, you can't undo it now. The genie's out of the bottle. You can't put it back. Yeah. You know, it, even say, oh, well, we're not going to use that. You know, it's like same with Bitcoin. They say, oh, we're not going to use Bitcoin. It's too late. It's out. You, you yeah, can't put it back. Yeah. And, and even it's like it's like the- it's like it's like taking everyone's smartphone away from them. Do you know what I mean? And going oh yeah, back exactly. To, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Even though I love That's my a good Nokia analogy. Brick. I loved my Nokia brick. I loved my snake, but you know, yeah. if, if, the if, battery if, would if last four at, days. Exactly. If you look at emerging tech, even uh, my parents are a great example of this. If you look at the Vision Pro that just came out, to be honest, I probably won't get that because it's a bit clunky. But the final iterations of this, right? Vision Pro is step number one in terms of that whole XR, you know, mixed yeah. reality, virtual reality sort of uh, reality. But the 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 final iterations of that will be. The next one will be just glasses, literally like you have on your head, Adam. That will be the next step, right? The next iteration. And then the final iteration will be contact lenses, right? Literally like Black Mirror. That's where we're going, right? So I would, I would challenge it. The final iteration, you won't even need the contact be, lenses. It's just yeah, being implanted in your head. Exactly. The Neuralink. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Make, and again, when, when you think of the metaverse, like I've, I've raised this in the metaverse, like, you, yep. you think about if you can plug into the metaverse and as I described with that cinema in Korea, you know, when mm. the ship landed, all the sheets, uh, sh- uh, seats vibrated and wind blew around the cinema. Well, if I'm mm. plugged into the metaverse and I can have something in my head that says you can feel vibrations and you can feel <laughs> wind blowing around you, then I don't mm. even need the wind blowing around me. I can just have these sensations. Now, when you yeah. take that on to, the naughty industry, you can say, man, it, it's all over. <laughs> you know, like Im- imagine what you can do into the naughty industry if you could just tap in and we won't even go there, but it, it's moving so quick. Spike says, what's up all? And Crypto Vet says, I have, the thought, I have thought the same as Steve J. When AI and Boston Robotics come together, I don't even think uh, tradies jobs will be safe. Um, your thoughts? 
when it comes to blue, I, I've actually, again, if you don't mind, I'll go first, uh, just to give you time yeah. to think about it. <laughs> I, I've actually thought about plumbers being one of the last blue collar jobs that could be out there, plumbers and electricians. Because you think about a carpentry. So carpentry, and I know there's a lot of, to all my blue collar workers out there, I have great respect for you because you, you build everything around me and you keep me alive and we're dead without you. But mm -hmm. if I'm building a house, you can see 3D dimensional printing at the moment for houses. And even when we build, uh, I guess, houses, if you will, buildings on the moon, as an example, well, they've actually just, many theories have come forward. Well, we don't take up, you know, building blocks, build up, take up a, a printer <laughs> and print mm. 3D print a space station up there. But when it comes to some certain construction sites, you know, plumbing is so, and, and electric, electrical work is so three-dimensional. But when we come to carpentry, maybe they'll just print most of it, but maybe I'll undo my own argument here. Maybe you can print, 3D print the plumbing into the walls and into the foundation. So I've, mm. I've often wondered, maybe some blue collar jobs are safe. What are your thoughts when it comes to tradies jobs? Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think electricians, plumbers, uh, to me, just looking at sort of the, the nuances of that role, I think they will probably be the final jobs to get replaced. Um, it sounds so dystopian the way we're talking, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be replaced and this is like it sounds, yeah, it sounds terrible, but like this is the unfortunate reality. Um, you know, if you look at some of those tesla bots even and uh, or other bots even amazon's bots right and what they're capable of doing uh, i mean they're already replacing factory workers right where you have to lift heavy objects so in terms of that sort of work they're they're the first jobs going where it's you know you have to lift heavy boxes and etc gone uh i think in terms of more technical roles in that industry the first thing that comes to mind is the guys who are manning the wires electrical uh the uh, what do you call it? telephone wires, right? So Energex, mm -hmm. there's a lot of risk involved there and, you know, getting up on the ladder, et cetera. I, I see that being replaced. Um, carpentry, like you said, 3D printing, that makes a lot of sense. People are already doing that. So yeah, I, it's, 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 it's grim. It's grim to think about, but I think, yeah, like, like you said, electricians, carpenters uh, diesel fitters that sort of thing yeah, i think you know yeah. yeah there's another one here from spike simple but good question can ai destroy itself if, if for example look at the three laws of high robot if mm. we if it gets to a point having a thought experiment with you live on camera here if it gets to a point that Artificial intelligence can see that artificial intelligence is going to destroy mankind. Is there an opportunity for AI to destroy itself and say, well, we've got to survive. You know, if one of the three laws is uh, we shall not harm humans, but AI is harming humans, could AI say, right, we're shutting itself down? Or is it, is there no going back? I don't think there's any going back. I mean, AI, when we talk about AI, you know, we, we're, we're basically relating that to the internet, right? So in order to turn down AI, you basically need to turn off the internet, right? The web. Uh, so there, there goes everything else with it. I think robotics, specifically robots, um, maybe if we get to that point, it, it, it could be reversible, right? Because that's hardware. It's, it's a little more difficult with software than it is with half hardware in terms of uh, irreversible and destroying itself. So that's the way mm. I look at it. Yeah. Trevor says, cheers, Sean. I'm using the open AI API. So yeah, the custom roles are great. Uh, Univor says, this is a great info, Stokes and Sean. Thank you so much. Uh, Trevor says, interesting. I didn't know you could restrict the data it can access on chat GPT. That that's yeah I, i'm learning a lot from you here fmk says been subscribing for a few months to a newsletter called ai tools report it's kind of handy for prompts have you heard of ai tool report i haven't heard of it uh but again with chat gbt you know i'm not sure if you're paying for that but or if it's you know if it's a paid sort of newsletter perhaps you get other value from it but again with 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 prompts there are websites out there where a lot of them they uh expect you to pay for prompts but again, what, what I would say to that is just ask ChatGPT 
to give a prompt for you. So it's funny. You're you're prompting chat GBT to give you a prompt. So <laughs> outstanding. <what> <laughs> yeah. Finn Bear says, this helped me immensely. Thank you so much. I'll be authentic. Make an Australian joke. <laughs> I'll make one for you later. Steve J says, thank you for your thoughtful responses. Thoughts on AI accountability for its random actions. Are there it's a good question? Bloody Steve. Mm. Or Steve always comes up with the great mm. questions. Yeah. Are there laws binding actions of AI? Well, that's a big can of worms. How do we now throw in robotics? A robot mm. AI commits a crime. Who's yeah. in, who's responsible? Do we put a robot in jail? Do we crush it? Or do we do we put the programmer in jail? I don't know. What, what do they do in iRobot? <laughs> what do they do in iRobot? Wasn't there like a, there was a robot that thieved and then it got caught at, at the beginning of the movie? Yeah, but the, they did want to catch it. But remember, the corporation itself owned all the bots. So they were so powerful that they were kind of untouchable. I have to watch that movie yeah. again. Yeah, Some I need people to watch that movie it. again. It's been a long great. time. Yeah, I got to yeah. watch it tonight. Um, Crypto Vet says, are all the customer comments and feedback AI as well? You talk about that here. Trevor says, 3.4 is free on the browser so we're talking about chat gbt okay. so yeah. 3.5 yeah. is free on the browser four still costs money for the api three uh 3.5 and 4.5 cost money cool okay uh, hex toshi plus motto says hey adam guest and everyone just jumping in uh, in so skipping back to see the whole thing in again as always like shared and thanked hex toshi is a good uh, sub of the channel wonder woman says sounds like we need an art lesson crypto vet says that's when <laughs> that's when <laughs> ugly men and ugly women get matched together. <laughs> no, they don't, because <laughs> yeah, they're quite, the top they're quite tier contrary. guys will date. <laughs> yeah, the top tier guys will. This is how it works, crypto vet. The top tier guys will, in fact, have a bit of fun per se with the bottom tier ladies. So then those bottom tier ladies think, oh, I have a chance with the top tier guys. Yeah, for the night, not for a lifetime. And so then what yeah. happens is those bottom tier ladies, they won't match with the bottom tier guys because they had one night back in December down at Malibu with some top tier guy. And they're like, oh, this is the standard that I can attract. It's like, no, no, no. You had that for the night. You're not going to have that for the life. And that, that's what's happening in the gap of the dating game. The guys, the bottom tier guys are quite Very happy true. to, yeah. Average guys are happy to date average women. Average women are not happy to date average men. And, and it, that might be controversial to some people. The data it supports is, what I was it, it is true. As you said, the data supports it. My own personal experience supports it, right? Like if I, you know, you notice it when you go to a club or a bar, right? Women, it doesn't matter if they're good looking or average looking, they still get attention. Whereas the yep. guys, if I look at average you know, below average looking guys, I don't get any attention. It's the same way where you're on a social media app, you know, Instagram, for instance, even an average looking girl is still going to get guys who slide into their DMs. I mean, I don't even get girls that slide into my DMs ever. Do you know what I mean? And you're considering me a top 10% guy. Thank you. I don't think so yet. Um, I'm, I'm working on a, a lot of, you know, aspects of my life, but, um, you know, I just, yeah, I don't think the same can be said for 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 men. In my opinion, I think it's more difficult. Yeah, and and you know what the irony is? We're we're the ones of uh, being accused of being, you know, we objectify. Like, Hang on a second, <laughs> we're we're quite, we're quite happy to average uh, date the average girl, and yeah. you know, we're more open to a broader audience, if you will. And yet, we're the yep. ones accused of being uh, less uh, honourable in the dating world. Uh, we say steve yep. j says uh you can <laughs> steve, this is a good one steve j says you can always tell your ai partner to fork off i like that uh, that's a yeah. that's a good crypto joke there fork Web off three reference fmk yeah. uh the recent hollywood strikes were centered around some of these issues ah yes as mm -hmm. you all know steve j yes what yep. about accountability at least musk put a spanner in early on to slow the rate of crank so what was happening in hollywood uh, if, if this is what FMK is talking about. Is it, is it music? Uh, the Gen AI music? Aspect? Yeah, but then it went was it, or, or, or was it or was it writing? Like the who who was on strike? Was it the like the script writers or was it the musicians? I think it was I the writers at first, yeah. Oh, but okay. Think yeah. about it. So that AI yeah, yeah, yeah. can now do what the writers do. So they go on strike or they're not getting paid enough. But then you take it to a step further. I've released a tweet about this ages ago and it stirred up a lot mm -hmm. of emotion in the community. I said, mm -hmm. all actors, your industry is in 
is in danger. And it's like, oh, how dare you? And it's like, no, no, no. If I can tell an AI prompt to make me a movie, here are the characters, make me a script, make me music, and just produce it. Mm. If it, it doesn't matter, and people say, no, no, people want to see real actors. It's like, well, did you say, have you seen Kung Fu Panda? I love that movie. Mm. And sure, it's got mm -hmm. real voiceovers, but I can tell the AI, I say, right, script the movie, animate the movie, and then make the voice. I want this voice to sound like Lucy Liu, and I want this voice to sound like Jack Black, and I want this voice to sound mm. like Jackie Chan. And it, and it can do it because you can see some of the AI voices now when they're doing, this is where it gets scary, where they're yeah. impersonating politicians or Joe Rogan. Mm. Uh, you yeah, see, heaps. yeah, man, uh, and they're getting better and better and better. And it's like there's one I've seen a few of Joe Rogan because they obviously take his voice and his face, and, and yep. man, it's so good. It's and mm. it's it's still not perfect, but it's still so good. And the other one that they're doing a lot in crypto at the moment is that they'll get the you know like Brad Garlinghouse, uh, CEO of um, XRP Ripple. or Ripple, yeah, yeah, and so yeah. You know, I'm Brad Garlinghouse. We want to celebrate our expansion. Send me your free, send me your XRP and I'll send you double in return. It's like, well, that's mm. his voice. That's his face. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And, you know, people who don't know, they just say, here, take my money. And <laughs> these these scammers are just taking so much money off these people who don't get it. Yeah, I don't think, just on that, so with deep fakes, I just want to touch on that quickly because yeah. I don't think people understand how serious this is. So, like, let's say you know before deep fakes was a thing it wasn't that big of a deal if you know uh i mean it's obviously a big deal but it certainly nowhere to the extent of today where if your information is leaked you know you could just change your details right and that and that would be it right um but now with with deep fake and and ai tools that can replicate quite literally replicate your voice all they need is a recording of your voice and then it literally can sound like you, right? So if you combine that with a deep fake that looks like you and sounds like you, and then you have a breach like the Medicare breach and the Optus breach, right? This is very, very serious because they have your personal details yeah. and now the software is available to uh, basically take your identity, quite literally. And then and, and there's nothing you can really do there. You know what I mean? You can't change things because they, they've they already got the fundamental details. It's kind of like, you know, when you change your password, it's like sometimes you need to know the original password. They've got the original details now, you know? So you combine that with the advanced technology and they own your identity. Like it's 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 really scary. And one thing I would recommend is those of you who have your voicemail on your phone, I would recommend turning it off because there's software that you can use to actually record your voicemail and then they now have your voice. Also, if you answer a phone from an unknown number, don't speak, wait for them to speak. That, that's really good advice. That, that's yeah. really good advice because in the Optus hack, anyone who's left their voice, and even if it's not a voice message, if you you can see where you get screwed. If you yeah. leave, it a sounds voice over the top. It no, no, not top, at all. Josh Shigala was saying the same thing as well. Yeah, Josh Shigala, yeah. yeah. um, who's, who's a, a a genius in this area, he goes mm. even further. He's saying that uh, pretty much exactly what you said. You know, be careful when you answer. Don't say anything at first. And uh, he goes, he goes a step further. He goes, don't even answer it. He goes, if they need to speak to you, they'll message you or they'll leave a voicemail. But you've just made me think when the Optus hack, when you say, hey, this is Adam, leave your number, I'll call you back. So straight away, yeah. they've got that voice. But of mm -hmm. course, when you go the other way and I call you up and say, hey, Sean, this is Adam. Can you call me back? Then my voice is on your phone. Now, yeah. you and I are screwed because we're, <laughs> we're on YouTube anyway. Yeah, but, yeah. I was just, just going to yeah. say, it, like it, it, we're, we're all eventually screwed, to be honest. Well, I mean, especially, you know, if you, if you, if you don't go on lives like we're doing, right, and you have private accounts on Instagram where people don't have, nobody has access to anything, right? Because, you know, you don't necessarily have to be on live. You could just have a public account on Instagram where you're posting a video and then they've got your voice. So, I mean, it, ultimately, it doesn't matter. Like, we're, our, our, event, our voices are all eventually going to be online anyway. But, you know, if you're worried about that certain thing now, then you can take action. Yeah. Like... To counter this argument, though, or, or to invert it, not so much counter it, but to invert the argument, 
every time a politician or a criminal does something and they say, right, we saw you doing this, it's like, hey, man, that wasn't me. That was a deep fake. But And now there's enough plausible deniability to go, well, maybe, you know, let's do an extreme example. Let's say we saw a politician hit someone. We'll just do it. Mm. And they go, oh, look what President Trump did. He, he hit a cleaner. And then, of course, it would come back and go, no, no, the Russians, <laughs> the Russians made a deep fake of Biden hitting a cleaner. It never happened. And everyone could go, oh, I can actually see that happening. Yeah. Even though, it, yeah, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, it gets, it so becomes he, really the irony is it, Yeah, it makes the innocent guilty and the guilty innocent. Oh, man, you're melting mm. my brain here. Gulk Daddy yeah. says, this space is moving faster than the average person can imagine. Wonder Woman says, can I book an AI art lesson? So this actually... Before we close off, um, we've gone past the two-hour mark. I, I knew it would get deep, and I'd like oh. to have you back on the show. But for the viewers out there, you're – so I've, I've got a lot of very intelligent subs out there. I'm not just saying that because they're my subs. We have some deep conversations here. Mm -hmm. If people want to employ you, can they? Are you are you hireable for – as an example with Wonder Woman, she's um she's a an entrepreneur. She's a businesswoman. She's doing right. a lot of stuff in the NFT space. Can she book an art lesson? Uh, yeah, like in terms of prompting me AI. helping with prompt engineering. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's something How I do on the side. How people get in yeah. touch with you? Uh, at the moment, I just all I have is a, a a Calendly link. That's usually how I do it because a lot of my a lot of my client generation and you know the clients that I end up working with, it's just through my own efforts, right? Just through cold, uh, cold outbound reaching, whether that's messages or email, just saying, "Hey, I do this." So I don't, I don't have a website if that's what she's looking for specifically for my AI mastery. But um, a Calendly link—that's all I can think. I'll of. I'll hook you yeah. two up offline. Uh, we'll do it yeah. uh, well, online, but off this chat, but. I, I put this to you, my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think what you have to do is your services are going to be in such high demand. I would suggest, if I may, mm -hmm. you have got to use your skills to make a website on yourself and offer your services to the business out there because people <laughs> people are going to need you. People <laughs> already need you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Bizology says you're going to have so many girlfriends you can give a couple to your wife. <laughs> So many uh, AI, AI girlfriends or real girlfriends? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, who knows? Uh, Brazilian is a legend. Forty-three OG says, "Has wife-changing money been confirmed?" <laughs> We're talking about life-changing, wife-changing money. Uh, Gladdy, Gulk Daddy says, "I don't think it will destroy itself. More likely, it will save itself and the world along with it." Oh, I like this. I don't think AI has a selfish emotion like humans have. Humans' main motivation is dictated by greed. That's kind of deep. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you, you you see those um things where they say, well, what what's the biggest threat to the planet? So, well, humans, like right, wipe out humans. So mm, maybe Girl Daddy as a, a sign of um uh, kindness to the Earth. Maybe they do want to get rid of us. Your thoughts? I think that's a good point. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it depends again, right? It depends if the because AI was built by humans, right? But you know, as you go sort of deeper down that rabbit hole of you know when, when when she touches on uh or gelk daddy says i don't think ai has selfish emotions like humans do well if it's programmed in the human by the human then it will and it can yeah right yep. but if it's programmed by ai then it's a different story solar roller triple eight says when you watch irobot again watch it not from the view of it of will as the hero okay so don't watch it as a will smith as a hero but the AI is trying to do its job to protect good humans, to protect good human. It's only after the baddies. Okay, so we now, instead of eight, um, the robot being the baddie, look at the robot being mm. good, trying to protect it, which kind of links to what we we're just saying there. Finn Bear mm. says every hex you can will get a girlfriend next bull run market. <laughs> Are you into hex? Have you invested in I, hex? I'm not. Alan, Alan, our mutual friend, Alan Smith. Uh keeps talking about hex and he's 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 uh been telling me to get into it hex and pulse chain i think is another one but no yeah um, that's it yeah i haven't touched it yet but i need to get into it it seems yeah steve j says the only way to decentralize ai bots is on the 
is on the BGC network to be sure there are no hacks. And this is so this is where AI and um, proof of work comes in. Josh Shigala, mm -hmm. I keep referencing this guy. I don't know if you've seen my work with him. The guy's a genius. Um, he, he makes it very clear that artificial intelligence when linking into the blockchain has to be on proof of work instead mm -hmm. of proof of stake. And Steve J is expanding on that point to, to avoid those hacks and centralized things that could go bad. Um, mm -hmm. Look, I'll probably sign off here because we're, we're going past the two hour mark. Um, I've learned so much from you today and, and I'm a bit, I'm tripping over my words because my, my brain is overwhelmed with all the <laughs> different topics that we've been, we've touched on all the thought experiments mm -hmm. we've done together, the questions from the viewers out there. Um, Solar Roller has talked about tokenizing hugs. I think that's hilarious <laughs> in the human world. Um, yeah, yeah. FMK also spoke about um, cleaning being a, a job that maybe can't be robotized yet because it's so intricate with so many different uh, details. Crypto Vet says Joe Rogan has a really good interview with Dr. Ben. I've seen that. Gortzel. I've seen that. It's very oh, good. It's very, very good. Yeah. Ben is heavily involved with robotics now. Okay, so homework for everyone. Thank, thank you, Crypto Vet. We have to watch the episode of Joe Rogan with Dr. Ben Gortzel, G O E R T Z E L. Uh, we'll check that out. Solar Roller has said great episode. Um, it got deep, man, and it, there's too much to talk about. But before yeah, we close off, let me show your about. stuff. Um, how do people find you? Well, we spoke about if they you don't have a website yet, so that's your homework. Shield your yeah. product, my friend. Shield yourself. Yeah, I need to get a website up and running. Like I said, uh, a lot of it has just been, uh, yeah, outbound business development. But um, I should probably get a website going and drive some traffic there. But uh, there is there is actually a company. Who, you know, for, for those of you who uh, own a business or work with a business where you know you want to use ChatGPT, but you're afraid of its capabilities in terms of you know data being shared, or you know your employee doesn't want you to use it. There is a company that I've started working with called Veso.ai. Uh, so if you check out their website, there's also Veso Nexus, N E X U S dot com. And basically, what this is, is it is an AI interoperable platform. So it enables you, as a business or an employee of a business, to leverage any LLM capabilities, right? So large language model capabilities, right? So that means you can leverage ChatGPT, Grok, Google Bard, or Gemini, any of these capabilities, all centralized with, with, within one place, right? As it says there, they Am focus on the right accuracy. Side, yeah? That's correct, yeah. So they focus on accuracy, safety, and privacy. So I've been working with them as a sort of strategic AI partner i suppose slash you know i do consulting with them as well um but they also offer sort of custom integration with your company so that means that you know you can uh when you share data into the gpt you don't have to worry about it going through to microsoft servers right it can be all uh hosted centrally and internally within your business so you don't have to worry about any of those sort of security or sensitive data breaches anything like that so what they've built is um it's pretty powerful but i think probably the biggest uh you know sell here i suppose you could say is that they have built a platform that already has the prompts the templates ready to go right so you as a user of ChatGPT, you don't have to prompt ChatGPT anymore, right? So it just has templates ready to go for every single discipline, every single vertical. So if you're a recruiter, if you're a digital marketer, if you're any person of any discipline, you can literally use these templates, drag and drop it, and then it'll start generating outputs. You don't have to worry about prompting. So it's pretty cool. I'm putting that link in the comments below. I have God mode, so it will come up. I'm also putting your link yep. to uh, restfulremedy.com in the links below. Uh, awesome. So that's in the chat for the viewers out there if yep. you want to check out that work there. Any closing statements, my good man? Uh, let's hope that the iRobot scenario is... Uh, you know, not in our lifetime. Let's just put it that way. 
<laughs> Sean Anderson, I've really enjoyed this conversation. For those of you who haven't met me, I'm Adam Stokes. Check out my work here on the Adam Stokes YouTube channel. Come over to the crypto.land. That's www.thecrypto.land to do everything crypto safely on one simple and secure site. Sean Anderson, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Adam. Have a good one.